Yo, Atlas speaking and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. What if I was reincarnated intro the Naruto world with the Skyrim system? Synopsis, in a world where Kaushin, a reborn Earth native, reshapes the Naruto universe, familiar faces embark on divergent paths. With the roots of Kanoha's society altered, a reformed and powerful Akatsuki faction, seeking redemption and control. As Akatsuki's influence grows, secret factions emerge, and loyalties are tested. Kaushin, armed with knowledge from his previous life, maneuvers behind the scenes, guiding events in unexpected ways. As the balance of power shifts, allies and enemies blur, resulting in a riveting tale of intrigue, betrayal, and the pursuit of power. And with that being said, let the tale begin. Chapter 1 Reborn when I arrived at the opening, the crying Itachi was jumping away and Sasuke collapsed onto the ground. I was still far away from them but I could see them as clear as day thanks to marking them on the map. Itachi went away, and I had only a small window of time. I ran to the boy who collapsed to the ground and opened his eyelids. He was collapsed because of the torture and chakra exhaustion. But two blazing red eyes were looking at me back. I quickly removed them from their sockets and placed them into my inventory before I killed the boy. His name and red bar vanished as he died. So long, Sasuke. When the red dot indicating Sasuke vanished, I left the Uchiha compound as fast as I could. In no time at all, I arrived at the house and slipped into my bed. Holy shit! That did happen, right? Right? My heart was beating like a galloping QB in my chest. No one saw me. I am sure of it. I planned this for months. Hokage wasn't spying with his jutsu. If he did, he would know Itachi wasn't alone, but he didn't. It meant he wasn't watching. Umbu was also pulled from there, route might be close, but not too close. They were waiting for it to end to collect their eyes. I did it in time. I don't see any red dots on the map. So no one is targeting me. No one is after me. No one saw me. After reasoning with myself, I calmed down and laid on my back. I opened the inventory and skipped the useless stuff. There at the bottom was a pair of Sharingan, one with two Tomo while the other with one. Sharingan, I type Bloodline Limit of Uchiha Clan. It is regarded as one of the three great dojutsu, the others being the Byakugan and the Rinnegan. While its powers originated from Kagaya Atsutsuki's Rinne Sharingan, its independent form was first manifested by Indra Atsutsuki. The pair has the incarnation of Indra and bestows the ability of Amaterasu on the left eye, Kagatsuchi on the right eye, and Susanoo on two. Can be implanted. The fuck? Can be implanted? I looked at the last sentence while the use button was blinking. I absent-mindedly brought my finger to press it, but at the last second, I stopped myself. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Hell to the no! Sharingan? I don't need that sick eye. It is a curse that is what it is. I don't want it. No! No universe, no gods, no to everyone. This is the second time I was offered this, but no. I don't fucking want Sharingan. No, 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 no. What is this? Asked the formless soul, drifting in the darkness. Where am I? What is this warm feeling? I am feeling it in my heart, not in my skin. This feeling is beyond physical. This secure feeling, this warm embrace is akin to a hug from a mother. I feel great. Hey, you! A voice jerked me awake. I opened my heavy eyes and looked at the man sitting across from me. He had blonde hair covered with dirt and mud. He was wearing a blue uniform. His eyes were looking at me lovingly. His hands were chained. Finally awake. I tried to turn my head to look around. I saw a carriage pulled by a strong-looking horse. It was easily pulling the carriage carrying six adults and the coachman. Its muscles were defined, and its eyes were red in color. It didn't look from earth at all. I lastly looked at the warm embrace holding me tightly. 
There I saw a beautiful woman with purple eyes and blue hair. She was looking at me lovingly just as the man did, nay, even more. I felt my heart tighten. I felt fear and helplessness in her eyes, hidden behind the unconditional love. Who are these people? How can they love me so much? I thought as I gazed at my body. Unsurprisingly I was in a baby's body. Wrapped tightly by cloth, and hugged by two fair arms. My mother's arms. There, there, baby. Mama will feed you pretty soon. The woman holding me said while looking at the other captives looking at the woman with pity and lust. She unwillingly pulled out one of her milk jugs and covered it with my face. We were trying to cross the border. The man across from me said while hot liquid filled my mouth. I tasted, nice, I guess. It was my first time tasting breast milk. Well, obviously not the first time, but it was the first time I was cognizant enough to remember it. Walked right into the shinobi ambush. Same as thieves over there. Damn you, tree huggers. Lands were fine until you came along. Said the man sitting next to my father. Guards were nice and easy. They haven't been worried about you. They talked while I was having a weird sense of deja vu. The conversation to some extent was too familiar to my ears, and the words. Tree huggers? I felt too familiar, but my mind was fuzzy. I couldn't remember where I heard those words before. While I was busy with the vague memories I was trying to hold on to, the carriage stopped at an opening. I couldn't see much because my head was still pressed onto my mother's embrace, but I could still hear some of the conversations. Have you caught them all? Asked an authoritative voice. Yes, sir. We caught them all, answered another. I tried to look, but my vision was covered, and I could only see legs and feet. Most were wearing sandals while one of them was holding a cane. We were lined up in a single row. The thief was in first, while my mother and I were in third. Father was just in front of us. There, two men were standing in front of us, one holding a piece of document. His face was covered with a mask that looked like an animal that I couldn't tell, while he was wearing gray clothes. There was a short sword on his back, and on his tight fastened knife holder. Step up, Ichijo Naikane. Man with the list said softly. His voice was void of emotion and cold. Japanese? I thought to myself, as the man in the front row shivered in fright. You are making a mistake. I am not a traitor. I am just a thief. The man shouted in panic and ran away. I am not a traitor. Halt! shouted the man beside the list holder. But the thief was fast on his legs. He ran away at a fast speed. Put him down! shouted the authoritative voice once again. With the order, a few waiting at the side removed star-shaped blades and threw them. They arrived at the thief and killed him in a matter of seconds. Anyone else feel like running? Asked the voice, while no one answered. Wait, you there, step forward. Asked the list holder while looking at my mother. Father tried to hide her from his back, but the one next to the list holder pushed him to the ground. Stay! In! The! Line! My mother stepped up while shaking in fear. She was holding me tightly in her embrace and patted my back to assure me everything was fine. But it wasn't. Everything was fucked up. Who is this? He asked as he pointed at me and all of a sudden the world froze. My soul left my body and floated in the air. A silhouette of a grown-up teenager appeared in front of me. He had blonde hair and purple eyes. His skin color was tanned, while his muscles were lean. He looked handsome and slim. Before I could wrap my mind around what was happening, a list appeared on the side of the team. And a line on top of his face. The line said, race, body, head, face, eyes, brow, mouth, hair. The sideline was showing a list of names. Atsutsuki clan. Uchiha clan. Senju clan. Uzumaki clan. Hyuga clan. Sarutobi clan. Aburain clan. Inazuka clan. Nara clan. Yamanaka clan. 
Akimichi clan, Kamazuru clan, Yatsuki clan, Fuma clan, Ketsuma clan, Shikua clan, Yuroko clan, Ashigaki clan. These are, I gasped as I looked around. Finally, I saw the people around. When I looked at the authoritative voice for the first time, I shiver went down my spine. In my soul form, I was scared to death. Danzo? The man had a distinct figure. Wrapped arm with a white cloth. An X-shaped scar on the chin. One covered eye while the other one merciless gray. Holding the cane in his other hand. I am in Naruto world? I looked at the ninjas holding us captive. These are rude? What is this interface then? I looked at the obvious menu that appeared in front of the handsome team. The beginning of Skyrim. This team must be my future self if I don't make any changes. The race list shows no selected race. Let's select a few then. I thought and thought of the Atsutsuki clan. All of a sudden the teen's figure changed. White hair, a pair of strange horns protruding from the forehead. Eyes were the same but skin was bleach pale and most of the options locked. Can't change my physical appearance when I select this clan. Since Danzo is here, if I want to live, I can't select this clan. I moved down to Uzumaki clan. This time, the teen's hair dyed in vibrant red and horns disappeared. The skin color was the same as before I selected the alien race. It looked handsome but there was this weird life force seeping out of the body. I can change the hair color and others but it has the life force of the Uzumaki clan. Danzo wouldn't leave me if I had these features. Might even kill me or worse, enslave me. Uchiha was the same. Hair and eyes turned black, but the fire inside was easy to feel. It didn't mean anyone could feel these, but the game was probably warning me. It was the same for most of the clans. I clicked the last clan on the unexpanded list, Hashigaki, and shark-like features disappeared. My original appearance appeared once again. Blonde hair, purple eyes. No weird energy, no fire, no special eyes, no mutation, and no horns. I would rather live without any bloodline than be a slave of this cyclops. I thought and started to tweak a few things from my appearance. What? I can't select a bloodline, but I sure can select how I am going to look in the future right. I added some muscles, fixed the hair to a cool style. Made it so... I wouldn't grow facial hair and increase the height. Eyes a little bit slanted, straight eyebrows and lips looking handsome. With it, I was done. With it, a column appeared in front of me, asking me my name. What is my name? I thought to myself. I couldn't remember my name from my previous life although I could remember I was reborn in this world. I remembered everything about Naruto and Skyrim and of course other games and fiction too but no memory of my previous life. Strange. Kaush and I entered and it appeared in the column. With it, I returned to my body, and the world, once again, flowed as it was. His name is Kaushin. Please spare my baby. He is innocent. My mother pleaded while my father cowed out towards the Cyclops. I felt pain in my chest, but I was helpless. Cain hitting the ground reverberated in the opening, and the man approached my mother. Pass him. He ordered as he tore me from my mother's embrace. I shouted profanities, but all it came out were cries. Nothing worth nurturing. He said after a while and threw me towards one of the figures at the side. Take him to the orphanage after we're done. Yes, sir. A woman's voice answered. I was held in her embrace while they continued. Kami Hanna, Kami Hero. Step up. List holder ordered. My parents stepped up, hand in hand, and waited. Guilty of treason. They were taken to the side while looking at me with tears in their eyes. Please take care of my baby. With it, they were stabbed to death while I cried without knowing why. Chapter 2 Monkeys. Dropped in an orphanage. How fucking classic. After my parents were killed in front of my eyes, 
by the man hated by many, the female root agent dropped me in front of the orphanage door and bolted away. Fucking thank you, lady. At least you alerted them so they can come and pick me up on this cold night. Don't know if it feels cold because it really is or I just lost my parents' embrace. Maybe both. I know I was born again, and I have a previous life. I know I had parents in my previous life, but that is it. I don't remember anything about my previous life except the fact I had one in fiction of that world. And the feelings brewing inside of me are real. I know for sure that those who died were my real parents. I know the darkness I was floating in was my mother's womb, and I know they loved me very much. But I don't know why I love them back. Tears fell from my baby face as someone picked me up. She had brown eyes and gray hair, not natural, aging. Her back was slightly hunched, but her arms were strong. Another little angel. She said with a sigh. Though she was genuine, she looked tired. I can't help but hate people. Or you are just another orphan caused by the devil. Ugh. She hates Naruto. Let's give you a nice bath and a cradle so you can sleep. Fuck. I forgot I can't move on my own, can't even converse. Wait, can't even wipe my own arse. Shit. And clean that bottom of yours, little stinky. She said while moving her hand to clear the air. Sigh. The best I can do is planning at this point. Let's start with the facts I learned. I am in Naruto world. Jutsu, powerful enemies, the constant threat of death. Check. I have a cheat. Not sure how it works, since I can't reach the skills section nor inventory. But the opening was the same as Skyrim, so I should be able to access them after some time. Check. I don't feel like sleeping, and it seems I don't need to, nor do I feel hungry, then I should be able to live without both of them, but of course I will do them regularly to avoid any suspicion. Danzo killed my parents for suspecting them of being traitors, thieves, or spies. From his age and attire, I can say it is close to Minato's death. My parents probably escaped after Naruto was born, and the village was ruined by QB. What Matron said supports this idea too. All right, I will kill Danzo for sure. Not soon maybe, but I will kill him for sure. That is not negotiable. If I can cause his death earlier, I will, if not I will grow strong to kill him myself. Wait! I can't kill him in tens of years to come if I do it myself. But I can make others kill him. I have all the information in the world I can use against him. I don't really desire to kill him with my own two hands. Him being dead is more than enough. I should plan that. Until then, I should remember the details. What else? Naruto should be in the orphanage, so I will be friends with him. I pity the boy and it would help me along the way. In three or four years, Akumo Ninja will try to kidnap Hinata. But I will be too weak to interfere with that, and it doesn't end badly. I will let it happen, I simply don't care. In six years, Achihashirsui will die. Again, I will be too weak. Please, six years old Kavya level? What is this, trash level fanfic? I doubt it. I love Shirsui, he is one of my favorite characters in the Naruto series, but I can't stop. The following year, the Uchiha massacre will happen. Again, I don't care. Itachi is an emo boy with a big hammer. Everybody knows what happens when you give too much power to children. I do have some plans in mind for that though. Let's follow that one. From then to the start of the series, it is blank. Or I simply can't remember. Whatever. Oh, let's see. I was bathed and now put in a cradle. It seems cozy enough. Let's try to summon the interface. Sigh, nothing. Imagining myself pressing an imaginary tab button. Nope. Calling out for skills and inventory. Nothing again. Let's just hope it will come out on its own. Last year was boring. Eating, shitting, and sleeping. Nothing else. Oh, you know what, I don't have to sleep at all. I didn't have to eat either. 
but guess what, if I don't people go crazy. So, I made sure to sleep every night and eat when other kids did. I couldn't let others know about this ability, under no circumstances. No sir. The movement was minimal, and freedom was non-existent. But hey, at least I could see other kids. One of them being the blonde hated by everyone. Have you ever heard of the story of the five monkeys? If not, let me share it with you. It goes like this. A group of scientists placed five monkeys in a cage, and in the middle, they placed a ladder with bananas on top. Every time a monkey went up the ladder to reach for the bananas, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water. After a while, every time a monkey tried to climb the ladder, the other monkeys would pull it down and beat it up to avoid getting soaked again. Eventually, no monkey dared to go up the ladder, regardless of their desire for the bananas. The scientists then decided to replace one of the monkeys. The first thing the new monkey did was try to climb the ladder, but the other monkeys pulled it down and beat it up. Soon, the new monkey learned not to climb the ladder. The scientists replaced the original monkeys one by one, and each time, the new monkey would try to climb the ladder only to be pulled down and beaten up by the others. Eventually, all the original monkeys were replaced, and none of the new monkeys had ever been soaked with cold water. Despite this, no monkey would climb the ladder for fear of being beaten by the others. They simply followed the established behavior without knowing why it existed in the first place. This was taught fear. It was the same for the kids, who were like the monkeys in the story. When grown-ups hated one of the kids, others would instinctively put distance. It was still okay, Naruto was small and had to be taken care of. Workers and matrons still fed, bathed, and tucked him in. But as he grew up, people would hate him without knowing why, and he would be marginalized without knowing why. Truly sad. I am not the type that would get sad easily, but whenever I see this kid, I feel my heart strain. So, I crawled over to play with him. Workers put me somewhere else? No problem, I went back. I spent most of my time with the little blonde. No one would even question it, after all, we looked similar. Chapter 3, Prank Time Hey Ko, why don't people like us? Naruto asked. His big two years old eyes looked adorable. Feck, how could people hate this little shit? They do like me, Naruto. They hate you. But I don't know why. His eyes got teary when I said that, they're there. I am with you, aren't I? Do you need anyone else? I said while petting him. You are the best. Naruto hugged me. What? People hate him already. Why can't I use it to my advantage? Huh? Don't judge me. As he grew up, Naruto realized the behavior of others. Like the monkeys they are, all the other kids avoided the little blonde like a devil he was. Except me. Of course now they started to stop playing with me too, but small sacrifices. Scale is so outweighed. I mean the main protagonist on one side, and a bunch of nobodies on the other. How hard can it be? Matron was a little helpless at first, but as I grew up, she bluntly forbade me to play with him, but boy did I care? Nope, not at all. She then punished me with chores. Oh man, you can't punish a person with good times. Doing chores considered having a good time? Welp, if you have seen what I've seen, you would agree with me. Miscellaneous increased to one. Finally! Fucking finally! I was waiting for this for such a long time. Yay! Now, I know there was no such skill in Skyrim, but it doesn't matter. Finally a reaction. I willed it to open and boy, was it a surprise. Miscellaneous. Perks. Quick hands. Allows you to increase your speed when doing miscellaneous tasks. Such as, sweeping, cleaning the dishes, washing clothes, painting the walls, cooking, gardening. Damn! The list was going on endlessly. Anything that wasn't shinobi related was in this skill, and just by acquiring this perk, I could do them all, all, faster. Proficiency. Increase mastery over the chores. 
allows you to complete them with more ease. Only applies to chores. For example, when sweeping with a broom, mastery over the said item increases, but if you were to use the broom as a weapon, you wouldn't even know how to hold it. Fair enough. Same should be for flame control over cooking and battling while using fire. All right, not bad. There were a few more perks basically increasing the chance of success, taste of the foods, or durability of items tended by me. But all in all, they were still miscellaneous. It was still a start though. It was the only skill floating in the sky, but it was at least there. Now I know, when I practice other things, their star maps will appear too. Yeah, so Matron couldn't scare me with good times. Chores, I do them willingly. I create troubles so I would be punished. I beg Matron to let me do them. She thought I'd do them for the extra portion of food they give to who does the chores for the day. I let them think like that. I eat the food they give as a prize like a starved animal to make them think like that, but I just love the sweet, sweet notifications. Well, the things I made to be grounded were borderline pranks. And guess who loved them? Yep, one little blonde loved how I prank others and started to devise pranks of his own. And boy, was he talented when it came to pranks. Let's just say people hated Naruto a lot. When he was grounded, the chores were double than my own, and as a good friend, I would lend a hand to him to finish them quicker. Only to help him, I swear. Times flew away while I was grinding my only skill. In one year, it reached twenty and also earned me a couple of levels. Now, there was a major difference from the game. I couldn't increase health, stamina, or magicka, whelp chakra in this case. But, I could train them. Running around, doing chores was increasing my stamina and with it my chakra. I don't know what is the spiritual part of this, but I guess experiencing life is considered training in health. Can't really complain. I want to stockpile my perk points for now. I will probably need them when I finally awaken other skills. It has been four years since I was brought to the Kanoha Orphanage. Life was mundane among the kids while learning little to nothing without anyone caring for you. Kaushin, are you coming? A little blonde asked while his blue eyes were hiding his nefarious thoughts. Another prank? I asked while sighing. You got it! He shouted with excitement and dashed away. He was, of course, the protagonist of the real story, Uzumaki Naruto. I didn't know when he would be kicked out of the orphanage, but it seemed close. The hatred the matron and other workers showed towards Naruto influenced other kids as well. It was getting more and more obvious as we grew up. Besides me and a volunteer worker with black hair, no one else liked this kid. In return, this ball of energy was pranking everyone besides the two of us. The black-haired woman was Uchiha Makoto, Sasuke and Itachi's mother. She was a good friend of Naruto and would appear from time to time to spend some time with the kid. Other than that, no visitor ever comes to see the kid. Not the godfather Eero Sinin, not the student of his father, Kakashi, and not the most guilty of them all, Hokage Haruzen. I pulled my face mask covering my face and bandana covering my hair and followed behind the blonde silently. Sneak increased to five. A line appeared in front of my eyes while I was walking in the shadows. Oh yeah, I got other skill trees too. Finally increased to five. Now I can now have the stealth perk. In total, there were 15 skill trees. Namely, Chakra, Jinjutsu, Illusion, Summonjutsu, Conjuration, Ninjutsu, Destruction, Tenjutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block, Healing Jutsu, Restoration, Henge, Alteration, Fuenjutsu, Enchanting, Smithing, Bukujutsu, One Two Handed, Shurikenjutsu, Ranged, Sneak, Speech, Alchemy, Miscellaneous. When I first felt my chakra in my groin, what? Should I say Dantian instead? When I felt chakra in my groin, skill trees popped up one after another. I still had no mastery nor access to most of them, but chakra star map which was mainly about chakra control activated. Rest were simple enough to understand too. As of now, I am level 5 thanks to the silly quests or increase in skills I achieved over time. Now, 
Unlike the game, I started with zero mastery over every skill and it sucked balls. But unlike the game, I could increase the perks without using perk points. So what did perk points do? Good question. Perk points would increase my mastery over the said perk instantly. So, stealth, for example, you are 20% harder to detect when sneaking, plus 10% per additional rank, max 60% one-fifth, allowed me to hide from prying eyes, and now that I allotted a perk point, I was 20% harder to find. Since I was level 5, I had 5 perk points and I used one of them now, but it didn't mean I had to use all of them to increase stealth. I could just train it and increase my proficiency. There were also differences in perks, because, well this was a ninja world. There were techniques and even special eyes to see through walls and stealth so, some of the perks were allowing me to be invisible even from said eyes. For example, the last perk of the sneak skill, Ultimate Ninja, allowed me to be invisible while I was sneaking and even Sharingan, Byakugan, Rinnegan, and other eyes couldn't see me. But to level up sneak to that level would take a long time. Anyways, my biggest increase was in miscellaneous. Since the matron was forcing me to do odd jobs. All the kids did them, but Naruto and I did thrice more. But doing them increased my mastery, so I couldn't really complain. Luckily everything that wasn't about the battle was jammed into one skill tree, and I could gain mastery in all of them together. They weren't really important stuff, but they gave good enough EXP and were the only reason I leveled up so much. Kaushin, we are here, Naruto whispered as we arrived at the boiling unit. The furnace distributing the hot water was here, and Naruto geniusly decided to heat it to the extreme to prank the matron. She was a ninja and could handle a little bit of heat, and all the kids had already had their baths. Naruto pulled out a couple of strange-looking purple balls and showed them to me with a grin. What are those? I asked. These, my friend, are toad oils. Naruto giggled. They are highly combustive and will increase the temperature of the water in seconds. Are you sure about this, Naruto? This will end up bad. I said. Though I had a previous life, I couldn't remember it at all. I just knew I had one. And with the memories of fiction in my head, I was a little more experienced than other kids, but I was one too. I kinda knew it would end badly, but I was still eager to see what this prank would do. It is fine, you scaredy cat. Naruto waved his hand and threw the two odd things into the furnace. Let's see how they shun us now. At first, nothing happened and I sighed in relief. Then all of a sudden the furnace started to quake like a mad bull. Oh no! I shouted and started to escape. Run Naruto! No, 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 no! Naruto panicked. I hit him on the face and dragged him away. The furnace looked like it was going to explode any second. Finally, Naruto realized this too and we ran away. And we weren't even at the stairs that were climbing to the first level from the basement, the furnace exploded. Shit! Chapter 4, Monkey Kage Yup! Naruto got expelled. Although there was no solid evidence on who exploded the furnace, Matron was just looking for an excuse to kick the poor kid out of the orphanage. And kick she did. I had come close to being expelled too, but luckily I still had a few plus points that allowed me to escape with only a light punishment. I had always been eager to help with chores, and Matron appreciated my willingness to assist. In truth, I was just honing my skills to level up. Sorry, Naruto. I sighed as we sat near the riverside. I would like to live with you too, but I don't think the amount of allowance would be enough for the two of us. We can always fish here, Naruto said reluctantly. I can't even chop without you. They either overcharge or plain kick me out. That is why I am always here to help you with shopping, but beyond that, I am helpless too. Sorry. What did you say? A voice interrupted us from behind, causing us both to jerk and turn around. There stood an old man with a goatee and plain clothes. I immediately recognized him as soon as my eyes landed on him but in my shock. Who are you old man? Naruto asked fearfully. I'm just an old man passing by, the man replied, looking furious. 
Can you tell me why you can't shop on your own? It is as I said. Naruto explained with tears in his eyes, shop owners either refuse to sell me anything or overcharge me. If it wasn't for Kaushin, I would have starved to death long ago. I saw the killing intent manifest in the old man's eyes, but he hid it in a matter of seconds. So this must be young Kaushin, right? Shouldn't you introduce yourself first before asking, old man? I asked, feigning fright. Ho ho ho, you're right. I'm sorry. I was just traveling and hungry. I smelled the delicious fish. Do you mind sharing with me? Hokage laughed as he asked. If you are hungry, Naruto muttered and passed one of the fishes on the fire. But we only have this much, so can't give more. You idiot. You will starve if you give away your food. I punched his head to act as a sensible brother. This was my chance to trick Hokage. Actually, kid, I have some say in the village. How about I increase your allowance so you two can live together? Hokage said while munching on fish. For real? Asked Naruto while I secretly grinned. I was expecting this. How can we trust you? I asked. If I leave the orphanage I can never go back. I know this fool would share his food with me and we both would die. I promise you, young Kaushin. Sarutobi smiled like an old grandpa, and I was almost influenced by his aura. Almost. If you say so. I reluctantly said. Yes. Naruto on the other hand was jumping like a monkey. We live together. Yes, yes. Calm down now. I held his shoulder and passed one of the fishes. So you two are friends from the orphanage? Sarutobi asked while I felt his chakra was probing my body. He sighed in disappointment after a while. We have been best friends, brothers ever since. Naruto answered excitedly. No one beside him ever spoke to me. It is good that you two have such a close friendship. I am glad you two can live together. Hokage said after we finished our fish. I am sure you two will help each other. You better believe it, old man. Naruto shouted with a smirk. Kaushin is my little bro. Says the one acting like a fool little brother all the time. I sighed as I patted his head. I am bigger than you, Naruto shouted in defiance. Only a week, I answered back. Still. Ha ha ha. Hokage laughed heartily. I have to go now. But my promise still stands. Young Kaushin, you move with young Naruto, and tonight, your allowance will be delivered. Thank you, old man. I bowed while he vanished. Naruto never said his name, but the old man knew it. Naruto was too stupid to notice, and I shouldn't be smart enough to notice it. So, I let it slide this time, old goat. Let's go home, Naruto. I smiled. Finally, I achieved one of my goals. We moved my stuff from the orphanage to Naruto's house for the rest of the evening. I didn't have much to carry anyway. When I entered his apartment, I was staggered. It was no different than a dumpster. Naruto, you idiot. I punched him in the head once again. This fool hasn't cleaned his house for a week now. What? He asked in surprise. How can you live in this dumpster? I asked in anger. It is not that bad. He said, while lazily sat on the couch. Cleaning. Now. But I have nothing to clean the house. I can't buy them. He said with tears. Why didn't you say so earlier, idiot? I patted his head and left the house. I arrived at the store selling cleaning supplies and sneaked into the back of the shop. All of a sudden the shadows swallowed my presence and my color faded. The store wasn't crowded and there was a customer at the cash register. I took a look at the items. Unlike the game, I could see the details without taking them into my inventory. When I looked carefully, I could see the name and the details of the item appeared in front of me. Common mop. Weight, 0.1 value. 30. Of course items with extra ability would be shown as well. But a simple mop only showed weight and the value. 
I grabbed mops, washing agents, and some other stuff and threw them at my inventory. Oh yeah, I had one. Grabbing a soap bar I walked to the cashier. The owner looked at me suspiciously while I looked back with puppy eyes. After five seconds of gazing, he smiled and asked for the money. I paid and left the shop with a smirk. I wasn't feeling guilty at all. This man kicked Naruto out several times while we were in charge of buying stuff for the orphanage. Sneak increased to 6. Speech increased to 25. I haggled with a shop owner about the price of meat. I didn't have much and in the end, I convinced him. It gained me a speech point. I arrived at the house and forced Naruto to clean the mess, while I went back to the market to steal ingredients to cook dinner. Fish were small and could hardly fill our growing bodies. I returned with vegetables and meat and started to cook. Where is ramen? Naruto asked in shock after he was done with the cleaning. He was so surprised to see there was something else on the cooker. As if only ramen could be cooked in his house. The sheer disbelief on his face was inspirational. You can't eat ramen every day, Naruto. You should eat vegetables and meat too. I told him. Man, this sucks. He threw his hand around and sat with a pout. What is your dream, Naruto? I asked with a sigh. To become Hokage, of course. He said excitedly. And what is Hokage? I asked again. Strongest shinobi in the village, of course. And do you expect to be strong by just eating ramen? I asked. Yes? He said unsure, no? Of course not. You should eat vegetables and lots of meat. Come on eat now, tomorrow we can prank the shop owner. Yes. You are the best ko. I know, I know. Ko, why do people hate me so much? Naruto asked once again. Usually whenever he asked this question, I would tell him I didn't know, but this time it was different. Naruto, I can answer this question but not before you are certain. I answered as I pulled out a can from my backpack. It was filled with worms we used for fishing. Hold on to this, and when you are ready to learn for certain, open it and I shall tell you. Why can't you tell now? He asked. Because you are not ready for it. I sighed. I knew he wanted to know, I wanted him to know. But it would only cause more problems since he was still young. Okay, I will hold on to this. Unbeknownst to Naruto, an ANBU was sweating profusely for the possibility of me blurting out the truth, but he sighed in relief when I didn't. But he left to inform Hokage about it. Kaushinkuen, take a seat. Old Dote summoned me to his office when I was walking in the street. Send him sama. I greeted. No need to be so formal. You are basically Naruto's brother. That makes you my grandson as well. You can call me grandpa if you want. Thank you, Hokage-sama. I respectfully answered. He exhaled the smoke and dropped down the pipe in his hand. Do you know why I called you here? No idea. I answered without any expression on my face. You told Naruto that when he is ready you will tell him why people are hating him. He looked at me with sharp eyes and continued. Do you know why? QB. I answered with one word only. His eyes opened widely as he looked at me. How do you know? He asked, with anger. I didn't. I smirked. He looked shocked then angry again. Before he could lash out I explained. I heard people are calling him the Demon Fox, Demon, and similar names. Go on. Hokage ordered. I was just suspecting that people hated him because of QB, but I didn't know how all of that was related to Naruto. I thought it might be because his parents were somehow related, but you and some of the Jounin are not hating Naruto, so it had to be something else. But when I saw your reaction I realized that it is related to QB and Naruto, so there are two options left. Either Naruto is an incarnation of Demon Fox which is not possible. Although extremely stupid, Naruto is incapable of evil. That only leaves one option. Naruto is carrying the Demon Fox. Don't know how yet. 
speech increased to thirty. Hokage looked at me in disbelief. He didn't know if a child of my age could come up with this outcome or could deduce to such a conclusion, but he didn't have anything to refute my claims. Not like my words were too complicated, nor were they something confidential. Most of the village already knew it, it was just forbidden to share. Which was extremely stupid. Will you tell Naruto? He asked after a while. When he is ready, I will. I nodded. Chapter 5 Strange Dreams I sat in the corner of the couch, staring at the skill trees and perks in my system. I hadn't activated any of them yet, but I was eager to see what kind of abilities I could unlock. Leaf concentrating exercise and tree walking are not that hard. Perks require a crazy high number of perk points, and I still don't know if there is a way to acquire them besides leveling up. If not, then this shitty system will only allow me to choose a path and focus on that one. Why cruel fate? Why? What have I been reincarnated to become? Some worthless side character with one mastery only? Even without a cheat system Naruto and Sasuke became gods of shinobi. Madara and Hashirama even more so. Yup, whatever you may think, I am not taking it back. Madara was better than Sasuke and Hashirama was better than Naruto, period. Let's see here. I mumbled to myself, scrolling through the various trees. Chakra control. Speedy hand. Novice illusionist. Novice shinobi. Elemental affinity. Iron muscles. Curing hand. Who am I? Perfect calligraphy. Armsman. Aim. Stealth. Backstab. Summoning. Fuinjutsu. Shurikenjutsu. Speech. Alchemy. Nature Chakra. I whistled, impressed by the sheer amount of options. Damn, this is just like the game but adapted to the Naruto world. Interesting, really. I gotta start prioritizing which ones to unlock first though. Can't just go willy-nilly with this shit. I tapped my chin, deep in thought. Well, obviously I gotta get my chakra control up. That's like the foundation of everything, right? But instead of using perk points from the get-go, I should focus on training it by myself at first to see if I can acquire these perks without using perk points. If I can, that would be extremely delightful. And then I gotta work on my elemental affinity. Can't be a weak-ass shinobi without an element. Who am I, Irika? Sakura? Niji? Tintin? Wow, lots of shitty characters in this world. I scroll further down, eyeing the Bukijutsu and Shurikenjutsu trees. Ew, now we're talking. I gotta get some sick weapon skills. Maybe I'll specialize in Shuriken, be like Itachi. Hey, he may be a fool, but he is a fool with insane shuriken skills. Yeah, that sounds badass. I glanced over at Naruto, who was napping in a nearby corner. Hey, do you think I can charm Tsunade if I focus on improving my skills? Gotta be able to talk my way out of trouble, you know? Naruto snorted in his sleep, causing me to chuckle. Who is Tsunade? Ramen chef? She is a beauty, but a bit old. I chuckled as I shook my head. I continued scrolling, my eyes widening at some of the more unique trees. Summoning? Fuinjutsu? Alchemy? Holy shit, these perks require lots of perk points. Maybe I'll save those for later. Oh, oh! What is this? Fuinjutsu perks are amazing. The perfect calligraphy perk will let me make intricate seals with ease and with disenchant. Holy shit, that's amazing. It allows me to disenchant seals and learn them. Although it is fucking expensive as hell, it is worth it. I can disenchant flying thunder and learn it. I need to increase this perk five times, to max, to be able to disenchant an SS rank seal, which will cost me about 200 perk points, but still. Amazing. I scratched my head, feeling overwhelmed by the choices. Man, this takes longer than Naruto picking his favorite ramen. But I'll figure it out. 
gotta make sure I don't waste any of those precious perk points. Under the Bukajutsu skill tree, I notice the perk sword saint. Nope. No. Hell no. What is this? A shitty wuxia novel? I don't want to master the sword. Swords are lame. I want to fire jutsu from afar to incinerate my enemies to ashes. Thank you very much. Oh! Skill tree adapted to my wishes. Of course, there are tens of different weapons I can use in this world unlike the game and all have different styles. If the skill tree focused on all of them, it wouldn't make sense. I exclaimed as the tree changed itself into a staff. No staff. I reprimanded the interface, bad system. You are a bad system. Do I look like a monkey to you? No bow. Nope. No spear. Come on. Oh, what is this? Gauntlet? That seems interesting. If I combine this with Taijutsu perks, I can get a double result. Yep, let's keep it like this for now. I smiled at the fist-shaped sky. Fist of iron, your gauntlets are so strong that they can shatter rocks and even break through metal with ease. Enemies that block your attacks with their own weapons will quickly find themselves disarmed. 15. Perk Points Quick draw, you can draw and strike with your gauntlets at lightning speeds, catching enemies off guard and leaving them no time to react. 25. Perk Points God damn it! What the hell is this? How can I spend 40 levels worth of perk points for two perks? Even if there is no upper level cap, it would still be impossible for me to activate them all. Flash Step You can use your gauntlets to propel yourself forward in a quick burst of speed, allowing you to dodge enemy attacks or close the distance between yourself and your target. 40. Perk Points And what is this? Am I in Katikyo Hitman Reborn or Naruto World? Huh. I know they are strong, but how am I going to get so many perk points? There has to be some other way. There must be. Damn! Moving on to the Shuriken Jutsu skill tree, I see Sharpshooter and Boomerang Shuriken, both of which would be incredibly useful for a ninja who specializes in ranged combat. I may activate this in the future. They sound interesting. Under the Sneak skill tree, I find Silent Movement and Vanish, which would be great for sneaking around undetected. Although sneak may not be valuable in the future due to specialized popping out like damn mushrooms. I need to test it. Man, I wish I had more perk points. I want to unlock all of these perks. But I guess I'll have to prioritize which ones to get first. Maybe I should start with chakra control, because that's the foundation of all jutsu. And then maybe I can work on my taijutsu and jinjutsu skills. But hey, there's no rush. I'm only five years old, after all. I have my whole life ahead of me to become a badass ninja. I yawned, feeling my eyes droop. Guess I'll take a nap. I'll figure out my skill trees later. Just gotta make sure I don't use up all my perk points on stupid things. I curled up in the corner of the couch, my eyes closing as I tried to sleep. In the next second, I found myself in a bizarre Naruto-themed amusement park, with endless perk points raining from the sky like confetti. I was ecstatic. I collected as many as I could, activating every single perk I'd ever dreamed of having. I transformed into the ultimate god of Shinobi, sporting an outrageous neon outfit with a custom-made headband that read Shinobi Supreme. As I strutted through the park, I encountered various characters from the series, all of them in hilarious situations. I saw Kakashi trying to read his favorite romance novel while riding a merry-go-round with lightning blazing sword in his hand, and Jiraiya dressed as a giant toad holding Sai's hand, taking pictures with excited fans. I even stumbled upon Orochimaru, who was managing a cotton candy stand, hissing and offering his snake-infused cotton candy to wary customers. What was weird about him was, his hair was orange. Hinata was trotting around riding the giant Kurama, but strangely white in color. Shikamaru and Choji were running around, while Ino was chasing them, riding a giant bear, and Shino was flying in the air with wings that looked like coming from his back. I couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all, feeling invincible with my new powers. That is, 
until I suddenly found myself face to face with Naruto, clad in a dazzling white Susanoo. He challenged me to a duel, and despite my over-the-top abilities, I was no match for his overwhelming power. With one final blow from Naruto's white Susanoo fist, I was sent flying through the air, crashing back down to earth with a painful thud. Just as I was about to admit defeat, I woke up with a start, my laughter turning into a groan. Rubbing my sore body, I looked around and realized it was all just a dream. My endless perk points and my flashy ninja outfit were all gone. To make matters worse, I found Naruto standing on top of me, shaking me awake. Hey, you were laughing in your sleep, he exclaimed, clearly amused. You must have had a pretty funny dream, huh? I grumbled in response, still disappointed that my ultimate shinobi powers had vanished with the dream. But deep down, I couldn't help but chuckle at the memory of my bizarre and humorous adventure. At least I had one hell of a story to tell. Chapter 6 Audacity of the Bitch It was the first day of the academy, and I walked alongside Naruto towards the building. I looked around and observed my surroundings, taking in the sight of the other kids walking around in their little cute ninja outfits, how pathetically adorable. I had been waiting for this day for a while now, after all, this was the start of many things. Naruto looked up at me with a big grin on his face, Ko, I can't wait to become a ninja. I smiled down at him, ruffling his hair, me too, Naruto. We're gonna be the best. It was the first day of the academy, and the students were buzzing with excitement. They had all been looking forward to this day for as long as they could remember, eager to take their first steps towards becoming ninja. As the clock struck nine, the door to the classroom opened, and a man with spiky hair and a forehead protector entered. Good morning, class, he said, his voice firm but friendly. My name is Nagin Yugai, and I'll be your instructor for the next few years if nothing goes wrong. He scanned the room, taking note of the eager faces before him. Before we begin, let's all take a moment to introduce ourselves. I'll start. Yugai took a deep breath before continuing. My biggest dislike is people who give up too easily, and my dream is to see all of you become great ninjas one day. We students listened intently, each of us waiting our turn to speak. First up were some of the unimportant characters that wouldn't matter in a few years. There was a couple from the orphanage where me and Naruto used to live, but both sides ignored each other conveniently. They didn't like Naruto, and of course by proxy me, and I didn't like them. After that was Sasuke, the brooding and serious member of the class. He introduced himself succinctly, stating only his name and his dream being great ninja, bringing honor to his clan, how he simped his brother and everything. Next was Naruto, the hyperactive and boisterous ball of sunshine. He announced his name with a loud shout and declared that his dream was to become the Hokage. Unlike in the original series, he was a lot more decorous. He wouldn't jump at every opportunity to embarrass himself, but his dream hadn't changed, fortunately neither did his positive outlook in life. Sakura, the pinkit and confident member of the class, introduced herself with a smile. She revealed her love of fashion and her dream of becoming a powerful kunoichi and gazed at certain someone from time to time. Ino, the bubbly and outgoing girl in the class, gushed about her love of shopping and her dream of becoming a ninja like her father. What drew my attention was, he wasn't simping over Sasuke, nor was she fighting with Sakura over emo dude. Choji, the chubby and food-loving boy in the class, proudly declared his love of eating and his dream of becoming a great ninja like his father and grandfather. Shikamaru, the lazy but intelligent member of the class, spoke in a bored tone about his love of strategy and his dream of living a peaceful life without too much effort. Shino, the quiet and mysterious boy in the class, spoke softly about his love of bugs and his dream of becoming a great ninja like his father. Shino is such a badass even when he is five. I really like this dude. Kiba, the energetic and hot-headed boy in the class, declared his love of dogs and his dream of becoming a strong ninja like his mother. He wants to be an alpha. Tough shit dog ass. Hinata, the shy and gentle girl in the class, spoke in a soft voice about her love of drawing and her dream of becoming a ninja who could protect her loved ones. Finally, it was my turn. 
I stood up, my eyes shining with determination. My name is Kaushin, I said confidently while beaming a smile. I like training and hanging out with Naruto. I dislike evil characters with sad backgrounds, and my dream is to be the best version of myself so I wouldn't fail myself. My famous quote is evil characters cannot have a sad past. You guys smiled at me, whose quote is it? A wise man. I declared. The class was now fully introduced, and you guys began the first lesson. I sat down next to Naruto, and we both looked at the chalkboard in front of us. You guys cleared his throat and began his lesson, today, we will be learning the basic principles of chakra theory. I listened attentively, already knowing most of the material from the knowledge stored in my mind, but I didn't want to be arrogant and show off. Instead, I helped Naruto understand the concepts better, answering his questions and explaining things in a way that he would understand. As the day went on, I found himself enjoying the academy more than I thought he would. I made friends with some of my classmates. Though, they were still a little apprehensive when it came to Naruto. After all, they had seen him in the park before, and most parents took their kids away from the little blonde. First day came and went like the wind, and it was kind of fun? I don't know. I guess I miss being in a school environment. Did I die when I was a student? Nah, if I was, I wouldn't miss school, unless it was summer. You miss school in the summer, right? As I walked into the classroom on the second day of the academy, I felt a sense of excitement and anticipation. I wanted to interact with others more. It was fun. Naruto was a tad earlier today for some reason, so when I entered, I started to look around. But as I made my way to my seat, I felt a sudden jolt as Naruto accidentally bumped into me. Before I could even react, Sakura was on her feet, her eyes flashing with anger. She was about to hit Naruto's head, but I quickly stepped in, blocking her path. What do you think you're doing? I asked, my voice stern and unyielding. Sakura glared at me, her fists clenched at her sides. Who do you think you are, stopping me like that, she hissed. Naruto bumped into me, and he deserves to be punished. Now, I always try to be objective. This wasn't a novel, manga or anime. These people were real, and they were alive. The key word is try though, there are some things I did and will do to make things easier for myself, sadly, approaching Sakura and trying to like her is not one of them. No scratch that, not sadly. Fortunately. I don't like her. I hate her guts. There. Ever since we were small, this little piece of shit acted like the Kanoha was her father's. In the park, she would terrorize Naruto over nothing. She and her clique that she called the fan club would gang up on anyone standing in their way. I usually didn't pick a fight with toddlers, but now it was different. I could feel my blood boiling as Sakura's arrogance and entitlement hit me like a wave. Who was she to decide what punishment Naruto deserved? And how dare she think that she had the right to hit him in the first place? I stood my ground, my eyes fixed on Sakura's. Beat it forehead or I will draw your family history of yours there. It will fit, I am sure of it, not because your forehead is massive but because your family history is shorter than you, I said with a smirk. Just because he bumped into you doesn't mean you have the right to punch him. This is my first and last warning. If you try to hit either me or one of my friends, I will punish you so badly, you will not be able to cry Sasuke's name. Sakura's face twisted in anger and shame, and I could see the hatred burning in her eyes. She was so used to being one of the cool girls in the classroom and the head of Sasuke fan club. How dare two unimportant characters argue with her? She was about to retort when a few girls started giggling and whispered to each other. She suddenly felt apprehensive. True, she was the head of Sasuke fan club, but it wasn't the only club in their age group. She could pick a fight against Naruto, but not everyone. But she still wanted to get her way with Naruto. Fine, whatever, she huffed, her arms crossed over her chest. But don't think I'm going to let this go, Naruto. You'll get what's coming to you. I could feel the tension in the air as Sakura stormed back to her seat, and I knew that this was the end of it. 
She was just trying to claim some of her pride points, as if I cared. Little bitch. Jinin. You started the academy to become a full-fledged shinobi. Your path is dangerous. You should pass through the fire and swim through hell. But when you do, a new dungeon will appear for you. Finish with the highest score to be on the same team as your brother. Dash, optional, learn an elemental jutsu those taught in the academy. Dash, optional, learn two other mandatory branches, fuinjutsu healing jutsu. Dash, optional, steal the bells. Dash, optional, impress your jounin sensei. Chapter 7, Kanuki I walked into the classroom with Naruto, scanning the room for any familiar faces. Most of the students were already seated, chatting with their friends, while others were still trickling in. My eyes landed on two boys sitting at the back, one with a lazy look on his face, and the other with his hand buried in a bag of chips. Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akimichi. I made my way over to them, a small smile playing on my lips. Hey, lazybones, I greeted Shikamaru. You ready to learn about some sweet ninja moves today? Shikamaru let out a low groan, clearly not amused by my antics. Can't we just sleep through class like usual? He complained. I chuckled. Sorry, bud. Looks like we're stuck here for now. I turned to Choji and gave him a nod. What's up, big bones? Choji's face lit up at the nickname. Hey, Kaushin. Want some chips? He offered, holding out the bag to me. I grinned and took a handful. Ah, thanks, man. You're always looking out for me. We chatted for a few more minutes, making small talk about how scary their mothers were, before you guy entered. You guy entered the classroom, effectively ending our conversation. I turned my attention to the front of the room as he began his lecture. It was a typical introduction to the basics of chakra control, but I found myself nodding along with you guys' words. I'd already learned this stuff from the anime, but it was interesting to hear it again in a different context. As I listened, I couldn't help but notice Choji's stomach growling. I smirked and leaned over to him. Hey, Choji. You might want to grab a snack before class next time. I don't think I've heard a stomach growl that loud before. Choji turned red and Shikamaru rolled his eyes, but I could see the corners of his mouth twitching slightly. You guy noticed the commotion and gave us a stern look, which we quickly responded to by focusing back on the lesson. Despite my casual demeanor, I was actually enjoying the lesson. You guy was a good teacher, and I appreciated his enthusiasm for the subject. It was refreshing to see someone who cared about what they were teaching, rather than just going through the motions. As the lecture came to a close, I stretched my arms and let out a small yawn. Well, that was informative. Let's go outside for practicals, Shikamaru's favorites. Haha, <laughs> Shikamaru dryly laughed, already packing up his things. Choji giggled to himself, still slightly embarrassed about his growling stomach. I grinned to myself as I gathered my own things and headed out of the classroom with Naruto. Mizuki was waiting outside for a practical lesson, and he, being he, was targeting one poor blonde in our class. Ino, nah, she is rich. Me, I am handsome and everyone knows handsome people cannot be poor. Of course it was ugly and orphan Naruto, poor bastard. I want you two to go into the forest in pairs and gather this type of plant. Mizuki showed a drawing of a plant commonly used in hospitals for burn injuries. Ha! Greedy bastard wanted us to collect plants for his profit, as if I would let him. Is this part of the class or a mission from the village, sensei? I asked, much to his displeasure. It is part of the class, of course. Mizuki said with a red face. Good then. I smiled and he too copied my smile, but in the next second, I yelled, Everyone, I will buy the plants you bring. Each stock is 100 Ryo. Really? Sakura exclaimed in shock, but held her mouth in the next. Yup. I will pay cash, so the more you gather, the more you will earn. Of course, Sensei will also give you extra notes due to your success, so win-win. I smiled. Others looked fired up while Mizuki looked at me with bloodthirst. 
Heh, noob. Kaoshin, you are with Naruto, this is your area. He said in rage. I took the map from him and realized what was going on. The area he marked was infested with small animals. Small but territorial. They were a variation of raccoons called Kanuki. These little critters resembled a raccoon, but with a bushier tail and a larger size. They roamed the dense foliage and were known for their pranks and hijinks. The Kanuki were notorious for causing mild damages to nearby villages, such as stealing food and ruining crops. They were quite the nuisance, but they were not lethal creatures. Despite their annoying nature, the Kanuki were also fiercely territorial. They marked their territory with powerful scents that warned any intruders to stay away. If any outsider dared to cross their boundaries, they would face the wrath of the Kanuki. Their attacks were quick and ferocious, but not deadly. They used their sharp claws and teeth to scare off any would-be invaders. Kanuki have a natural affinity for chakra, and they can manipulate their chakra to enhance their agility and speed, allowing them to easily climb trees and evade capture. They are also highly skilled at using their sharp claws to shred through fabric and other materials, making them a nuisance to villagers who have to constantly repair their damaged clothing and belongings. The villagers of the nearby villages knew to avoid the areas where the Kanuki lived. They knew not to venture too close to the edges of the forest, or they would face the consequences. However, there were always a few foolish travelers who thought they could outsmart the Kanuki. These travelers often found themselves with torn clothes and a few scratches and bites, but they were lucky to escape with their lives. The Kanuki were not to be underestimated, as they were a force to be reckoned with in their own right. They may have been a nuisance to the villagers, but they were also fiercely protective of their homes and their way of life. They lived in harmony with the forest, and they would do whatever it takes to defend it. Now, why did the villages keep the Kanuki just outside of their borders? Three reasons, they were nothing to train shinobi. No different from bunnies. They would still attack, but shinobi could escape without any trouble. Second, Kanuki had innate sensory abilities, and most villages used them as free workers. Due to their territorial nature, villages allowed them to live close to borders, so when others wanted to sneak in, they would have to pass through the areas Kanuki lived, and by placing a few clever seals, the border team could detect Kanuki and get notified if anyone was wandering around those areas. The third reason, Kanuki urine, which they used to mark their territories was a fertilizer for plants Mizuki wanted them to search for. Better than best in the market. Combining all of these together made Kanuki annoyingly valuable rodents that villages didn't want to get rid of. But as I said, they were nothing to train shinobi, but to a student? Oh, let's just say, Naruto would be injured all over if he were to venture there alone. So you want to play this way, huh, Mizuki? Chapter 8 I've Come to Bargain, Dormammu Where are we going, Ko? Naruto asked innocently, with his big blue eyes. We need to buy some stuff first, follow me. I said and walked further from the academy. Mizuki gave us two hours and Naruto was anxious to get back to his area for the task. Now that we were going to the village, he was even more depressed. But he had full trust in me, so he still followed. Yo, kid. Are you up for a task again? A woman said as we reached an alley. The woman was wearing skimpy clothes that hardly covered her assets, and behind her was a business vendor that did some shady things involving lots of screaming and red lights. But in the daytime, she was working as a healer with her meager amount of knowledge about healing jutsu and alchemy. I met with her not long ago while looking for quests in the village. She asked me to gather plants for her to turn into burn creams. Same thing Mizuki was asking. She was paying 300 to a stock, so yeah, I was going to make 200% profit from this business. That was why Mizuki was so upset. Yes, but I need some advance payment. I said and her face mopped. I will bring them back in two hours, I promise. Heh, I shouldn't trust you, but we were partners for a time now. I will cut percent ten from the total though. No thanks. I turned to walk away and urged Naruto, let's go Naruto, we can find some other place to sell at least 100 stocks. Speech increased to 34. 
one hundred? The woman cried behind me, wait. Wait, I was joking. You broke my trust. I thought we were partners. I said with a fake sadness all over my face. Cut the crap, brat. Here is your advance, come back in two hours. She said, as she pushed the money in my hand. Thank you. I smiled and dashed away with Naruto in tow. Next, we went to a candy shop and I bought some cotton candy. And buy some, I mean a lot. It cost me around 3,000 Rio. Later to a fruiter and bought 10 watermelons. After that, we sneaked into the forest and got to the border marked in our maps. Co, why did we buy all these? We spent 5,000 Rio for all these. Naruto said with a grimace. Mizuki sent us to a dangerous location, Naruto. I sighed and showed him the map, see here. From here to here, these places are infested with Kanuki. What? Naruto exclaimed as he stepped back. We were always in the forests or near the river. It wasn't our first time seeing Kanuki. He knew how painful they could be, yeah, now we will make a deal with them. Deal with Kanuki? He asked incredulously. Yup, just follow my lead. I smirked and moved to the border. Once there, I cut one of the watermelons and threw them just over the border and it didn't take long for damned rodents to move towards us cautiously. Some brave ones started to steal watermelons I threw earlier. When there were more than 100 of them near the border, I moved closer and said, I've come to bargain, Dormammu. Wait, this is not that universe. I came to bargain, Kanuki. I showed the cotton candies. They smelled the air and started to move closer. Good, it seems like you are smart. I want you to gather these plants for me, and I will give you all these? What do you think? Benefit of one of the perks in speech skill tree, interspecies communication, perk points spent nicely. Although it didn't allow me to understand or speak animal language, we could, how can I say it delicately, get each other. They started to move their paws and cry, obviously asking for more. Greedy bastards, I have only this much. Either leave it or take it. They tried to bargain a bit more but I was resolute so they all vanished into the forest while I sat down near a tree. Are you sure about this, Ko? Naruto asked with a tilt of his head. He was majorly confused. Yup. The plants Mizuki asked us to gather grow up faster when Kanuki marks them with their pee. Although there are some outside of their territory, the most are within their borders. So other students can gather maybe as much as we can get. Really? Naruto asked with disbelief. Yup. Mizuki asked each team to gather three stocks and there were fifteen teams. Fourteen will get around three that makes forty-two, some will bring more and we can get around fifty. That is why I promised that lady that much. Oh, you are a genius, Ko. Naruto fisted the air, we can be rich if we do this every day. Sorry to burst your bubble, but it is not possible. It takes time for these plants to grow up, that is why I never used this method before. I was collecting them for pocket money, but since Mizuki forced my hand, I thought I could teach him a lesson. I smirked. How so? Naruto asked, confused. You don't listen at all, do you? I shook my head, he promised me for the teams that can get three stocks and each extra stock will increase the grade. Oh, we will get the top score. Naruto punched his palm. Yup. And we will also get rich. I smirked. Yes, you are a genius. Naruto copied my smirk as we waited. Soon, the damned rodents came back with the plants in a pouch and threw it over the border. I gave a look at the pouch and roughly counted fifty-five. It was better than I expected. I passed them the watermelons and cotton candies. And before we left, I turned to look at the rodents and shouted, Don't wash the cotton candy. It is sad. The rest was as expected. Mizuki was not happy with Naruto's success and my purchase. As I expected, some got over five stocks for the top score, and I got more than one hundred stocks, happily selling them to the lady. Easy money really. 
Chapter 9, Naruto's Awakening to Love Naruto, why are you so dense? I asked while looking at his stupid face. What the hell do you mean, bastard? He asked with a scoff. Look there, what do you see? I pointed at the side where trees were hiding a princess. Obviously not good enough, as she could be seen. Huh, Hinata. Over here. Naruto shouted, much to Hugo Princess's shock, as she dashed away like a spotted gazelle. Do you remember the beating I gave you yesterday? I asked, and Naruto winced involuntarily. Good, that should keep him straight. What happened afterwards? Hmm? He started to think while holding his chin, oh, Hinata gave me this ointment. It was super useful. I should buy her ramen. Well, you are not hopeless at least. I sighed, let's think out loud. Why would she give you the ointment? Naruto scratched his head, looking puzzled. I don't know, maybe she just wanted to help me because I was hurt? I rolled my eyes. Come on, Naruto. Use your brain for once. Why would Hinata go out of her way to help you if she didn't have feelings for you? Naruto's eyes widened as he finally caught on to what I was saying. Wait a minute, are you saying that Hinata likes me? I nodded. Yes, she does. And it's been pretty obvious for a while now. Naruto looked stunned. I had no idea. I mean, I've always thought Hinata was nice and everything, but I never imagined she could have feelings for me. Don't get me wrong, squirt. Hinata is nice. That aside, she also likes you and it is probably something to do with you saving her when you were small, remember? You came to me with all bloody when you were four? Oh, right. Naruto punched his palm, is it that simple? Of course not, idiot. I slapped the back of his head, it is not about only that. You were there for him, that is one. You made her feel safe, that is two. You didn't give up and despite being hated more than she did, you weren't a broming mess but a hopeful fool that could help others and unwilling to give up. All these. Well, now that you know, what are you going to do about it? I asked. Naruto rubbed his chin thoughtfully. I don't know. I mean, I like Hinata too, but I don't want to mess things up. What if I do something wrong and she gets hurt? I put a hand on his shoulder. Look, Naruto. You don't have to do anything grand or over the top. Just be yourself and be honest with her. You have to understand one thing, if a woman likes you without you doing anything, it means they like you for who you are. Well, there are also looks and other shit, but you are lucky in that department. So, just be yourself. Naruto smiled at me gratefully. Thanks, Ko. Although I feel like you insulted me somehow, I cannot put my finger on it anywhere. I smirked. Don't get too sentimental on me now. We still have training to do. He winced as he dashed off, no can do. Gotta catch Hinata and buy her ramen. They grow up so fast. I looked at the vanishing back of Naruto with a smile and turned towards the other direction. Should I visit my darling too? I miss her already. Am I too clingy? What the hell, I may be clingy, but if being clingy doesn't shout love what does. As Naruto dashed through the forest, he couldn't help but feel nervous. He had never really thought about Hinata in that way before, but now that he knew she had feelings for him, he couldn't help but feel a bit giddy inside. Finally, he spotted Hinata up ahead, and he sprinted over to her. Hey, Hinata, he called out, waving his arms. Hinata jumped at the sound of his voice, and her face turned bright red. In Naruto Kuen, she stammered. Naruto felt his heart skip a beat at the sight of her blushing face. Um, hey. Listen, I just wanted to thank you for the ointment you gave me. It really helped. Hinata nodded, still looking a bit flustered. I'm glad it worked. Hey, are you feeling better now? Naruto smiled. Yeah. I am. Hey, do you want to go get some ramen with me? Hinata's eyes widened in surprise. Our ramen? With you? Naruto nodded eagerly. 
Yeah. I mean, if you want to, that is. Hinata hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Okay. I would like that. Naruto grinned, feeling a rush of excitement. Great! Let's go to Ichiraku. As they walked through the streets of the village, Naruto and Hinata chatted about their favorite things to do and their dreams for the future. Hinata was still shy, but Naruto could tell that she was starting to open up to him. When they finally arrived at Ichiraku, Naruto ordered two bowls of ramen and they sat down at a table to eat. The warm, savory noodles and broth filled them up quickly, and Naruto couldn't help but feel a sense of giddiness sitting there with Hinata. As they finished their meal, Naruto turned to Hinata. Hey, Hinata. I just wanted to say, I'm really glad we got to hang out today. You're a really nice person, and I like spending time with you. Hinata's face turned pink, and she looked down at her lap. T thank you, Naruto Kuen. I like spending time with you too. Naruto felt a flutter in his stomach at her words. He wasn't sure what was happening between them, but he knew that he wanted to spend more time with Hinata in the future. What he was feeling at that moment was not something he wanted to cast away. As they left the restaurant and said their goodbyes, Naruto felt a sense of happiness wash over him. Maybe he was dense sometimes, but he was starting to realize that there was something special between him and Hinata, something that he wanted to explore further. Chapter 10, Banter Brushstrokes, A Playful Palette of Teasing and Flirting As I walked into the classroom, my eyes immediately locked onto Ino's figure. She was surrounded by a group of girls, including Sakura and some characters I didn't recognize, all chatting animatedly. There was something about Ino that I couldn't help but be drawn to. Perhaps it was her playful spirit or her sharp wit, but whatever it was, I found myself constantly seeking her company. Trying not to make my interest too obvious, I casually made my way towards the group. With each step, I tried to appear as relaxed and confident as possible. As I reached them, I offered the girls a warm smile and greeted them with a jovial tone, Hey there, ladies. What are you all talking about? Eno glanced at me, her eyes meeting mine for just a moment before she looked away, feigning disinterest. But I could see a hint of a smile playing at the corners of her lips. Oh, it's just you, Kaushin, she said nonchalantly, we were discussing some recent events at the academy. I leaned against a nearby desk, my eyes focused on Eno, trying to read her expressions. Really? That sounds interesting, I replied with a teasing grin, care to let me in on the conversation? Eno raised an eyebrow, challenging me. Why should we? You're just going to make fun of us, like you always do. Me? Make fun of you? I feigned shock, placing a hand over my heart. I would never dream of it, Eno. A few of the girls around us giggled at my theatrics, and even Eno couldn't suppress a smile. However, she maintained her act of indifference. Oh please, Kaushin. I've seen you tease everyone here. What can I say? I shrugged, the grin never leaving my face, I'm just an equal opportunity jester. Eno rolled her eyes but couldn't hide her amusement. As the conversation continued, we exchanged playful banter and teasing remarks. To an outsider, it might have seemed like nothing more than friendly teasing, but there was an undeniable undercurrent of flirtation between us. Eno's eyes would occasionally linger on mine, and her smile seemed to grow brighter whenever our gazes met. We danced around each other, neither one of us quite willing to admit our feelings openly. It was a game we both enjoyed playing, each of us carefully testing the waters, seeing how far we could push before retreating back into the safety of our casual friendship. As the atmosphere in the classroom grew more relaxed, our banter became even more playful. So, you know, I began, giving her a sly grin, I heard you're really good at flower arrangements. I guess that makes you a petal prodigy? Eno snorted, trying to hide her laughter. Wow, Kaushin, that was a terrible pun. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm just trying to make you smile, I replied innocently, knowing full well that I had succeeded. But seriously, you should show me your skills sometime. Maybe you could teach me a thing or two. Eno raised an eyebrow, a playful challenge in her eyes. 
You learn flower arranging? I don't think you have the patience for it. Hey, don't judge a book by its cover. I shot back, feigning offense. I can be patient when I want to be. Besides, I'd be learning from the best, right? Eno blushed slightly at the compliment, but quickly recovered her composure. All right, fine. Maybe I'll teach you someday. But don't say I didn't warn you when you get bored after five minutes. I grinned, thrilled by the idea of spending more time with her. Deal. I promise I'll give it my best shot. As we continued to chat, the other girls occasionally chimed in with their own teasing comments, but it was clear that Eno and I were the main event. Our connection was palpable, and it felt like the world around us was fading into the background as we focused solely on each other. At one point, Sakura nudged Eno, whispering something in her ear that made her blush and shoot me a quick, embarrassed glance. I couldn't help but feel a flutter in my chest, wondering what they were discussing. Eno quickly brushed it off, however, and continued our conversation as if nothing had happened. Our banter went on, each of us trying to one-up the other with witty remarks and light-hearted jabs. The energy between us was electric, and I could tell that we were both enjoying this little game of ours. So, Kaushin, Eno said with a smirk, I've seen you practicing with your shuriken. You're not half bad, but I bet I could still beat you in a competition. I raised my eyebrows, feigning surprise. Oh, really? You think you can beat me? Well, I guess we'll just have to find out, won't we? Eno's eyes sparkled with excitement. You're on. Loser has to buy the winner a treat from the dango shop. I laughed and agreed, looking forward to our friendly competition. Deal. Though, gotta say. This is the smoothest way of securing a date, if I had ever seen one. Eno's cheeks flushed a deeper shade of red, and she looked away for a moment, pretending to be annoyed. It's not a date, Kaushin. Just a friendly competition between classmates. I couldn't help but chuckle at her response, amused by her attempt to downplay our flirtation. All right, all right, I'll play along. Just a friendly competition it is. The bell signaling the end of the school day rang, cutting our conversation short. Eno looked at me, her eyes shining with a mix of excitement and anticipation. So, I guess I'll see you on the training field later? I nodded, unable to keep the grin off my face. You bet. I'll be there, ready to show you just how good I am with those shuriken. As we gathered our things and started to leave the classroom, Eno turned to me one last time, her expression softening. I'm looking forward to it, Kaushin. I felt a warmth in my chest at her words, my heart racing with the thrill of our connection. Me too, Eno. Me too. As we walked to the dango shop after our shuriken competition, Eno seemed to be in high spirits, even though she had lost. I couldn't help but wonder if she knew I had held back a little, just to make it a closer match. But I kept that thought to myself, not wanting to ruin the moment. We entered the dango shop, the sweet aroma of freshly cooked dango filling the air. Eno's eyes scanned the menu, trying to decide what to order. So, Kaushin, any recommendations? I pretended to ponder her question for a moment, stroking my chin thoughtfully. Well, I've heard the Mitarashi dango here is to die for. But you could always try something new, like the Hitachi dango. It's a bit sweeter, but still delicious. Eno's eyes lit up as she made her decision. All right, I'll give the Hitachi Dango a try. What about you? Since you're trying something new, I'll stick with the classic Mitarashi, I replied with a grin. With our orders placed, we found a small table near the window and sat down. As we waited for our Dango to arrive, Eno couldn't help but bring up our competition. You know, Kaushin, I thought I had you beat for a moment there. I chuckled not wanting to admit I had held back. You definitely gave me a run for my money, Eno. But I guess I just got lucky. Eno raised an eyebrow, clearly skeptical. Lucky, huh? You sure it wasn't something else? Feeling the heat rise to my cheeks, I quickly changed the subject. So, what do you think of the dango shop? I've always loved this place. It's got a nice, cozy atmosphere, 
don't you think? Eno looked around, taking in the quaint decorations and warm lighting. Yeah, it's really nice. I can see why you like it. Our dango arrived, and we both eagerly dug in. Eno's eyes widened as she took her first bite of the Hitachi dango. Wow, this is really good. I can't believe I've never tried it before. I smiled, glad she was enjoying her choice. Told you it was worth a try. We spent the next hour chatting, laughing, and enjoying our dango. It felt like we were getting to know each other on a deeper level, and I could sense our connection growing stronger. As we talked, I noticed Eno playing with a small strand of her hair, twisting it around her finger absent-mindedly. It was a small, endearing gesture that made her seem even more adorable. I couldn't resist teasing her a little. You know, Eno, I've noticed you have this cute habit of playing with your hair when you're talking. It's quite charming. Eno's cheeks flushed, and she quickly stopped twirling her hair. Oh, um, I didn't even realize I was doing that. It's just something I do when I'm comfortable, I guess. I smiled warmly. Well, I'm glad you feel comfortable around me. Eno looked at me, her eyes meeting mine, and for a moment, we just stared at each other, a silent understanding passing between us. As we left the dango shop, our fingers brushed against each other, sending a jolt of electricity through me. I hesitated for a moment before daring to take her hand in mine. Eno glanced at me, a look of surprise and happiness in her eyes, but she didn't pull away. We walked hand in hand, our steps in sync as we made our way through the village. The sun was beginning to set, casting a warm, golden glow over everything. It felt like the perfect end to our impromptu date. Eno glanced at me, a shy smile on her lips. You know, Kaushin, I had a really great time today. I squeezed her hand gently, returning her smile. Me too, Eno. It's been a lot of fun. As we continued walking, our conversation flowed effortlessly. We talked about our dreams, our fears, and even shared some embarrassing stories from our childhoods. It was clear that our connection was deepening, and I couldn't help but feel a thrill at the prospect of exploring this new aspect of our relationship. As we approached Eno's home, I could see her reluctance to say goodbye. She hesitated for a moment before speaking up. Kaushin, do you think we could do this again sometime? I grinned, my heart swelling at her words. I'd like that, Eno. Just say when, and I'll be there. Eno blushed, her eyes shining with happiness. Well, then, I guess I'll see you soon. We stood there for a moment, our hands still clasped, neither of us quite ready to let go. Finally, I leaned in and pressed a gentle kiss to her cheek, feeling her warmth against my lips. Eno's blush deepened, but she didn't pull away. Good night, Eno, I whispered, taking a step back. Good night, Kaushin, she replied, her voice barely audible. I feel disturbance in the force. A yell sounded from the flower shop as I was feeling giddy in my stomach as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I fear something terrible has happened. Dark side is after my princess. It is my dad. Eno facepalmed as she looked at the flower shop with twitching lips. Gotta go, bye. Sayonara, Nijirandeo. I turned away and ran away without waiting. Omek S rank mission, a coordinated Kanoha conception. Inoichi, Shikaku, and Choza stood outside the local tavern, the moonlit night casting long shadows on the ground. Inoichi's grin was wide and mischievous as he slung a friendly arm around Shikaku and Choza's shoulders. Gentlemen, Inoichi began, his voice filled with excitement, I've had a brilliant idea. Tonight, we shall embark on a mission of utmost importance, we're going to start working on having children. Shikaku raised an eyebrow, a knowing smile creeping onto his face. Inoichi continued, his enthusiasm infectious. Just imagine. Our kids will grow up together, train together, and become the next legendary Ino Shikacho triplet. It's destiny. Shikaku's eyes twinkled in agreement. That does sound pretty cool. What do you think, Choza? Choza, however, 
seemed hesitant, his face flushing as he glanced nervously at his friends. I I don't know, guys. This is a pretty big step. Inoichi and Shikaku exchanged glances before they both started encouraging Choza, their voices teasing but supportive. Come on, Choza! You got this. You're a natural-born dad material. Inoichi exclaimed, laughing. Yeah, man. And besides, we'll all be in it together, Shikaku added, nudging Choza playfully. With their words of encouragement, Choza finally agreed, his spirit pumped up and ready to face the challenge. The next morning, Choza found Shikaku and Inoichi outside the same tavern. They were slouched on the ground, half-heartedly poking the dirt with sticks, their faces sullen and defeated. Curious, Choza approached them, a concerned frown on his face. Hey, guys, what happened? Why the long faces, he asked. Inoichi sighed, looking up at his friend with a mixture of sadness and frustration. We were too pumped up and persistent last night. Our wives got suspicious and, well, we're on a no-baby-making ban for months. Shikaku nodded in agreement, bitterness lacing his voice. Yep, we're screwed. Both Inoichi and Shikaku looked at Choza, who seemed uncharacteristically bright and cheerful. They squinted at him suspiciously, the contrast between their moods all too apparent. Why aren't you miserable like us? Inoichi demanded, his voice tinged with envy. Choza puffed out his chest, a smug grin on his face as he savored the moment. Daddy wants it, Daddy gets it. Shikaku and Inoichi stared at him, their jaws dropping in disbelief, while Choza just basked in his triumphant moment, the earlier teasing and mockery all but forgotten. Chapter 11, Uchiha Massacre Today there was a blood moon because today was the day of the Uchiha Massacre. I thought a lot about what I should do with this, and I finally decided to be part of it. Not for preventing it, of course not, preventing had all the shitty downsides, but to encourage it of course. If there was something that could solve all my troubles, it was to make sure the massacre happened. After I moved in together with Naruto life was better. Sadly there were no silly quests from the matron but I could do odd jobs for people around the village to earn some cash and EXP. My skills increased, and I was getting better each and every day. When we were five, we started the academy. Mostly to teach us how to read and beginner level math, history, and stuff. Nothing ninja why. And now, we are seven years old. Shursui died last year, and I was too weak to even interfere with that shit. I liked your sway, I really did. But I was too weak to even get close to such a character without drawing a target behind my back. On the other hand, Itachi is a fool. He is cool and all but he is a fool nonetheless. He could have killed the black sheeps in the family, he could have killed Danzo, but no. Let's kill everyone, even the children, and make my brother hate me so he would grow strong and kill me, but I love him. I don't even care if he dies at this point, and anyway, I couldn't save Shursui. But today, it was different. There were risks of course, but I am confident in my abilities. Chakra, 15. Jinjutsu, Illusion 0. Summonjutsu, Conjuration 0. Ninjutsu, Destruction 0. Taijutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block 20. Healing Jutsu, Restoration 0. Hinge, Alteration 10. Fuenjutsu, Enchanting 5. Smithing, 5. Bukijutsu, 1 2 handed 15. Ranged, 20. Sneak, 30. Speech, 35. Alchemy, 0. Miscellaneous, 50. I am level 11 and have 11 perk points. I increased stealth. Perk two times with points and increase with sheer hard work once. Now it is almost full and gives a 50% increase while I am sneaking. I would have used all the perks I have to cap it, but without increasing sneak, I cannot get the perk further. Most of my skills increase thanks to books I found in the library. I wasn't sure if it would work before I visited, but after I read a story about a shinobi, it increased my sneak ability. And boy, if the library wasn't filled with books about sneaking shinobi. 
There were books about other jutsu branches, but for some reason, I couldn't increase them just yet. My theory was, I had to activate them first before books worked. And I haven't learned those yet. Hopefully, they will teach us soon in the academy. I also activated another perk, muffled movement, decreasing the sound I make when I am moving. Since shinobi are paranoid monsters that can hear anything, I had to activate this perk too. I am now near Uchiha compound, scanning the area with the map in the corner of my visage. I can't see the people hiding, but it is still giving me some sort of ability to see around. Oh yeah, unlike the HUD in the game, I have a small map in my vision all the time instead, though I can toggle it off. Although enemies aren't showing up before confronting, just like in the game, it is still good. As I was waiting, screams reverberated beyond the walls. I already discovered a weak entrance a week before and am waiting nearby. When I saw Sasuke running in, I sneaked in as well from the weak entrance I found. Sneak increased to 31. Sneak increased to 32. Holy shit! Sneaking onto full-fledged shinobi increases mastery blazing fast. When I arrived at the opening, the crying Itachi was jumping away and Sasuke collapsed onto the ground. I was still far away from them but I could see them as clear as day thanks to marking them on the map. Itachi went away and I had only a small window of time. I ran to the boy who collapsed to the ground and opened his eyelids. He was collapsed because of the torture and chakra exhaustion. But two blazing red eyes were looking at me back. I quickly removed them from their sockets and placed them into my inventory before I killed the boy. His name and red bar vanished as he died. So long, Sasuke. When the red dot indicating Sasuke vanished, I left the Uchiha compound as fast as I could. In no time at all, I arrived at the house and slipped into my bed. Holy shit! That did happen, right? Right? My heart was beating like a galloping QB in my chest. No one saw me. I am sure of it. I planned this for months. Hokage wasn't spying with his jutsu. If he did, he would know Itachi wasn't alone, but he didn't. It meant he wasn't watching. Umbu was also pulled from there, route might be close, but not too close. They were waiting for it to end to collect their eyes. I did it in time. I don't see any red dots on the map. So no one is targeting me. No one is after me. No one saw me. After reasoning with myself, I calmed down and laid on my back. I opened the inventory and skipped the useless stuff. There at the bottom was a pair of Sharingan, one with two Tomo while the other with one. Sharingan, I type Bloodline Limit of Uchiha Clan. It is regarded as one of the three great dojutsu, the others being the Byakugan and the Rinnegan. While its powers originated from Kagaya Atsutsuki's Rinne Sharingan, its independent form was first manifested by Indra Atsutsuki. The pair has the incarnation of Indra and bestows the ability of Amaterasu on the left eye, Kagatsuchi on the right eye, and Susanoo on two can be implanted. The fuck? Can be implanted? I looked at the last sentence while the use button was blinking. I absentmindedly brought my finger to press it, but at the last second, I stopped myself. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Hell to the no. Sharingan? I don't need that sick eye. It is a curse that is what it is. I don't want it. No. No universe, no gods, no to everyone. This is the second time I was offered this, but no. I don't fucking want Sharingan. No, 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 no. Chapter 12 Oops. In Hokage's office, four old people were sitting. What do you want, Danzo? asked Haruzen, the old monkey. I just want to discuss these decisions you took. Danzo tersely said, as he showed the new laws Haruzen signed. Old age got to you, huh, Danzo? Haruzen said with oozing sarcasm. I am Hokage. I don't discuss. I implement. Danzo's face was livid, but he had to do his best to keep his calm. A while longer. Yes, you are. But we are still the Elder Council. We have some say in the rules you lay down. 
the female old goat, whose name the author long forgotten, said. Yes, but those on Danzo show no, you have not. Hiruzen said with a stern voice indicating he wouldn't let the other three meddle into this. Fine, but I still want Kyuubi's host. Danzo, with no other choice, brought the subject to the Hokage's soft spot. You shall never have Naruto. You hear me? Old Third answered with a shout. I told you nth time, Naruto is a fine shinobi to be of Konoha and not a weapon. I still regret presenting him as the Jinchuriki. I shouldn't have done that. People of this village are so stupid. Says the most stupid. Three other old goats thought at the same time. While the council of useless and old were being useless and old, the Uchiha massacre ended. Meh, I killed Sasuke so there would be less trouble that came with him, and the system wants me to become the new Indra incarnation? No, thank you. I don't want my friendship with Naruto to be complicated. I like it when he is stupid little brother, not when he forgets everything to come after me to save me from my hatred. Really though, who would be stupid enough to use those eyes? Not only is it annoying as bitch, it will also turn me into an emo. For real? I will become an edgelord. The idea makes me shiver. No thank you. I am good as I am. Killing Sasuke and removing him from the whole plot was the best thing I could do though. I did it to prevent Naruto from chasing, hell even be friends with the stupid emo kid, but still. Sasuke is bad news. Orochimaru comes because of him, Naruto almost dies several times because of him. Now that he is dead, things will turn for the better. I hope. The funeral was sad. Although it was for all Uchiha clan, mainly everyone was there for Sasuke. After all, he was famous in the academy. Even Naruto was devastated. They still had this rivalry thing going on, although not fully developed. Sakura and many other girls looked like zombies. Come on Naruto, let's go, I said while dropping the flower we bought. I was not going to spend my hard-earned money to buy a second flower. Buying together with Naruto would suffice. Not like they meant anything to me. Why would someone do such a thing? Naruto asked. We cannot understand crazy people, Naruto. We cannot even imagine their state of mind. I sighed as I put my arm around his shoulder. We should grow strong to avenge him. You are right. I will be Hokage in the future. I will get so strong and bring his brother back to the village so he can apologize to Sasuke. Naruto said with newfound ambition. You sure will, buddy. As we were walking back, suddenly a crow appeared in the sky. It was huge. On top it was. Itachi? With his crimson eyes fixed upon the graveyard, his face contorted and his expression twisted into a bloody visage. A killing intent, so heavy and foreboding, seeped from his very being and radiated from his gaze. For a brief, heart-stopping moment, I felt as though I might keel over and die from fear. But then, with a thunderous roar, he shouted another name, shaking the very earth beneath us. Danzo! He shouted on top of his tongue. Come out now! The people had already recognized him and drew their weapons. ANBU from every corner jumped out and started to evacuate the civilians. Jounin filled the cemetery. And from two sides, two elders walked into the center. Hokage and Danzo. Danzo's face was ugly. It looked like he was frightened and edgy. Hokage on the other hand looked sad and determined. Itachi, why did you come back? He asked. We had a deal, third. You had to protect Sasuke. Itachi said between his tears. What are you playing, you traitor? Danzo shouted. You ordered me to massacre my family. I agree with you. You promised to protect Sasuke. Itachi was mad. Stop, spouting bullshit. You killed everyone in your family and stole your brother's eyes. You dare to put the blame on me? Danzo said righteously. Today, you die, Danzu. Itachi's voice boomed through the air as he materialized near the man, his crimson eyes blazing with intensity. 
Danzo was quick to react, flickering away before Itachi could even touch him. But Itachi was no ordinary ninja, he was a genius for a reason. In a flash of black feathers, a crow clone appeared behind Danzo and plunged a sharp blade into his chest. Danzo's form dissolved into smoke and a wooden log took his place. Itachi whirled around just in time to see the real Danzo charging towards him, a deadly wind-covered kunai aimed straight for his heart. But Itachi was no pushover either. In a blur of motion, he transformed into a flock of murderous crows, appearing in front of Danzo just as the elder's blade whistled through the air. Danzo's eyes widened in shock as he gazed upon the crimson-eyed Uchiha. A moment later, he crumpled to his knees, overwhelmed by the sheer force of Itachi's killing intent. Itachi raised his hand, ready to deliver the final blow to the man's skull, when a staff suddenly appeared before him. It was the Hokage, Hiruzen Saratobi, who had entered the fray. Stay out of this, Hokage, Itachi snarled, his gaze fixed upon the old man. Or I swear I will raise your precious village to the ground. But Hiruzen was resolute. I can't let you kill an elder of my village, he shouted back, his body already in motion as he engaged Itachi in combat. Jounin and Anbu appeared in droves, their weapons flashing as they clashed with Itachi. But the rogue Uchiha was far too strong for them. Danzo, due to not having the opportunity to harvest and implant the Sharingdons to his arm yet, wasn't at his peak. He had only one Manjiku Sharina, stolen from Shirsui, but he couldn't even use that at the moment. Chunin scrambled to evacuate the area, forming a human shield between Itachi and the vulnerable civilians. Naruto and his friend watched from a safe distance, their eyes wide with shock and awe as Itachi battled half the village's forces. Ga was nowhere to be seen, while Kakashi was deemed too weak to take on Itachi alone. Only two old men posed a challenge to the rogue Uchiha, but they too were struggling to keep up with his unrelenting assault. Hiruzen! Don't force my hand. Itachi's voice boomed with an intense, bone-chilling killing intent that sent shivers down the spines of all who heard it. His right eye twitched with barely suppressed rage and a powerful jutsu, the dreaded Amaterasu, threatened to erupt from within him. Hiruzen, one of the very elders who had ordered Itachi to slaughter his own kin, refused to back down, determined to face the consequences of his past actions. Danzo, on the other hand, prepared to unleash his own fearsome power, his right eye beginning to open. A sudden explosion of movement, and Itachi's eye burst forth with a gush of blood as black flames consumed Danzo. The elder screamed in agony, frantically trying to extinguish the unquenchable inferno that threatened to consume him. But the Amaterasu was relentless, burning hotter and brighter with each passing moment. When all hope seemed lost, Danzo suddenly disappeared, replaced by a summon that continued to burn in his place. Itachi glared at the summon with a seething hatred that seemed to scorch the very air around him, and he unleashed the full might of his Tsukuyami on Danzo, who appeared in front of him. Hiruzen moved to intervene, but Itachi's Amaterasu stopped him in his tracks, the flames roaring to life once more. In a desperate bid to protect his leader, an ANBU leapt between Hiruzen and the deadly flames, sacrificing himself to save his village. But it was too late for Danzo. Itachi's blade sliced cleanly through the traitorous elder's neck, and his head tumbled to the ground, lifeless. With a cold, calculating precision, Itachi removed his best friend Sharingan from Danzo's corpse, then collapsed to the ground, laughing maniacally in a haze of relief and exhaustion. His voice echoed through the opening, where the still-burning elder's body convulsed on the ground, promising to kill anyone and everyone who had hurt his beloved brother, Sasuke. I will kill you all. I will kill everyone that hurt my brother. This village will burn to ashes. Chapter 13 Aftermath The battlefield was a gruesome sight, filled with the remnants of a fierce battle that had left its mark on the village. The air hung heavy with the stench of blood and scorched earth, while the ground lay littered with the lifeless bodies of fallen shinobi. At the center of it all, Itachi Uchiha, exhausted and bloodied, lay gasping for breath, his face a mixture of pain, sorrow, and relief. His once pristine Akatsuki robes were tattered and soaked with blood, his once flawless skin marred by cuts and bruises. His Sharingan eyes, 
so full of hate just moments ago, now appeared dull and lifeless, drained of their former emotions except omni-craziness in them. As the remaining shinobi of the village struggled to recover from the shock of Itachi's brutal attack, a figure cloaked in darkness approached the defeated Uchiha, his presence all but invisible to those who still remained standing. This was the masked man who had been watching the battle from afar, waiting for the right moment to strike. With a fluid, practiced motion, the masked man scooped up the fallen Uchiha and vanished from the battlefield, leaving behind only a faint trace of his chakra signature. The villagers, too preoccupied with the aftermath of the fight and the revelation of Itachi's true intentions, failed to notice their departure. Back in the village, the news of Itachi's return and his revelation about the Uchiha massacre spread like wildfire, sparking a heated debate among the residents. Some were furious, demanding justice for the fallen Uchiha clan and the punishment of those who had ordered the massacre. Others, however, were more cautious, arguing that the truth was still unclear and that they should not rush to judgment. As the village struggled to come to terms with the implications of Itachi's words, the masked man carried him to a secret hideout on the outskirts of the village. There, he tended to Itachi's wounds, careful to avoid causing him further pain. The two of them spoke in hushed tones, discussing the events of the day and the consequences of Itachi's actions. It's done, Itachi rasped, his voice weak and hoarse from the strain of battle. Sasuke! I killed your murderer, and others will come after him. One by one, I will kill them all. The masked man regarded him with a mixture of pity and admiration. Good job, he admitted. You've done what needed to be done. Now, it's time to rest and recover. There's still much work to be done. As Itachi drifted into a restless slumber, haunted by the ghosts of his past, the village he had once called home faced a new dawn, one filled with uncertainty and the potential for both healing and further discord. But for now, the people of Kanoha were left to ponder the aftermath of the battle and the weight of the secrets that had been revealed. With the truth of the Uchiha massacre now out in the open, the village would never be the same. Trust would be harder to come by, and old wounds would be ripped open as the people of Kanoha struggled to come to terms with the actions of their leaders and the price that had been paid for their perceived peace. As the sun set on the day of the battle, the village was left with a choice, to learn from the past and forge a new path forward, or to let the bitter legacy of the Uchiha massacre consume them all. As the village reeled from the shocking revelations of the Uchiha massacre, Hiruzen Saratobi, the third Hokage, found himself struggling to maintain control of the situation. Desperate to preserve the fragile peace of Kanoha, he ordered his most trusted ANBU operatives to destroy any evidence that could implicate him or the Elder Council in the bloody affair. But his efforts would not go unnoticed. Whispers of the Hokage's attempts to cover up the truth spread throughout the village, sowing seeds of doubt and suspicion among the clans. Tensions rose as once loyal shinobi began to question their faith in the leadership of the village. The Hyuga, Nara, and Akimichi clans were among those who openly expressed their dissatisfaction with the Hokage's actions, arguing that transparency and accountability were essential for the village's survival. As the unrest grew, a group of determined shinobi banded together to raise the root headquarters, the secret organization founded by Danzo. They hoped that by destroying the symbol of Danzo's treachery, they could force the village to confront the dark deeds of its leaders and pave the way for a more honest and open future. The assault on the root headquarters was swift and brutal. The building was reduced to rubble, and any remaining root operatives were either captured or fled into the shadows. Within the wreckage, the shinobi discovered a trove of damning evidence, detailed records of Danzo's secret dealings, as well as his collaboration with Haruzen in the Uchiha massacre. With the evidence laid bare for all to see, the village could no longer ignore the truth. Furious and betrayed, the people of Kanoha demanded that Haruzen step down as Hokage, taking responsibility for his role in the massacre and the ensuing cover-up. Faced with the overwhelming anger of his people and the undeniable proof of his actions, Hiruzen had no choice but to acquiesce. With a heavy heart, Hiruzen Saratobi relinquished his position as the third Hokage, leading the village in a state of turmoil. 
the leadership vacuum left in his wake would prove to be a catalyst for change, as the people of Kanoha were forced to confront the consequences of their leaders' actions and the deeply rooted corruption that had festered within their once great village. As the dust settled on this dark chapter in Kanoha's history, the village's citizens would have to come together to forge a new path forward, one that would require them to reckon with the past and strive for a better, more just future. But the road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges, as the scars left by the Uchiha massacre and its aftermath would not be easily healed. With Haruz and Saratobi out of the picture, Kanoha needed a new Hokage and leadership structure. A new council of elders, comprising prominent leaders from powerful clans such as Hyuga Hayashi, Nara Shikaku, Yamanaka Inoichi, Akimichi Choza, Hataki Kakashi, Inazuka Tsum, Shibi Aburim, Senju Tsunade, and Uzumaki Naruto, along with the daimyo, have selected Tsunade as the new Hokage. Naruto was still young and wasn't part of the council until he would become a chunin. His vote would be in the hands of Tsunade as part of the Uzumaki clan. As the village worked to establish its new council, the search for the next Hokage began. After much deliberation, the council settled on Tsunade Senju, the legendary Sanin and granddaughter of the first Hokage. They believed her strong leadership skills and connection to Kanoha's founding lineage would help guide the village through these trying times. Tsunade, who had been away from the village for many years, was initially shocked by the news of her appointment. As she returned to Kanoha, she learned about the Senju genocide that had occurred under Haruzan's watch. This horrifying revelation only strengthened her resolve to restore the village's honor and integrity. Upon arriving at the village gates, Tsunade's first action was to find Haruzan, then beating him from the entrance of the village to the end. Enraged by the former Hokage's involvement in the atrocities, she proceeded to beat him senseless, her powerful fists carrying her fury as she dragged him through the streets. The villagers watched in awe, as this fierce and unyielding woman made it clear that she would not tolerate the corruption that had tainted Kanoha. Once Tsunade was officially instated as the fifth Hokage, her first order of business was to deal with the former council members, Kohari Yudatane and Hamira Mitokado. Two old goats for being incompetent fools and acting more than their worth were sentenced to prison, while Haruzan was forced to live his life in peace-slash-shame never to leave the village. With a new Hokage and council in place, Kanoha began the slow process of healing and rebuilding. Tsunade's strong leadership and the more inclusive council structure gave the villagers hope that they could move past the dark times and work towards a brighter future for all of Kanoha's inhabitants. With me by his side, Naruto too evolved with the village. He had matured and grown more talented, driven by a desire for justice and revenge. With Danzo gone, Hiruzen out of the picture, and Tsunade's unwavering support, Naruto's life transformed completely. The village was going through a revolutionary change, and so was Naruto. No longer hidden in the shadows, his true identity as a Jinchuriki and hero was revealed to everyone. The villagers who once feared or scorned him now had to face the consequences of their actions. Tsunade, the fifth Hokage, made sure that anyone who dared to treat him with disrespect would be punished. Those who had wronged him were forced to kneel in front of his house, day and night, as a form of penance. Though Naruto's life was undeniably better, it was important for me to make sure he didn't lose himself amidst all the newfound power and respect. After all, we were still living together, and I had to look out for him. As Naruto's fame grew and he gained confidence, I encouraged him to let go of his last bits of feelings he had for Sakura. Instead, I nudged him to talk to Hinata more and more, who had always admired him from afar. After their first outing at Ichiraku, they started to meet more and more. With some gentle prodding from me, they finally had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation and became sweethearts, despite their young age. Chapter 14 Race of Love A few months had passed since our first date, and Ino and I were now officially a couple. Though we were still young, our relationship had blossomed in a way that was equal parts playful and affectionate. One sunny afternoon, we found ourselves walking side by side through the bustling streets of Kanoha, our fingers brushing together as we strolled. Eno was wearing a mischievous grin, and I knew she was itching for some banter. So, Kaushin, she began, her voice dripping with faux seriousness, I've been thinking. 
you know how we're always competing with each other? I raised an eyebrow, feigning confusion. Us? Compete? I have no idea what you're talking about. Eno rolled her eyes, not missing a beat. Right, sure. Anyway, I've come up with the ultimate challenge to finally determine which one of us is truly the superior ninja. I couldn't help but laugh, my curiosity piqued. Oh, really? And what, pray tell, is this ultimate challenge? Eno leaned in, a gleam in her eyes. A race. From one end of Kanoha to the other. Loser has to, hmm, wear a ridiculous outfit chosen by the winner for an entire day. I pretended to ponder the idea, a smirk playing on my lips. Hmm, that's quite the challenge, eh no. But are you sure you're ready to face the humiliation of losing? Eno scoffed, her hands on her hips. Please, Kaushin. I think the real question is whether you're prepared to be seen in public wearing whatever ridiculous outfit I pick out for you. I couldn't help but chuckle at her confidence. All right, Eno. You're on. But don't say I didn't warn you when you're parading around in a clown costume. Eno shot me a playful glare, but her eyes were sparkling with excitement. We'll just see about that. As we made our way to the starting point of our race, we continued to tease each other, our words carrying an undercurrent of affection despite their apparent competitiveness. Kaushin, have you ever considered that maybe you're just a bit too cocky for your own good? Eno asked, smirking as she looked at me from the corner of her eye. I feigned shock, clutching my chest dramatically. Cocky? Me? I prefer to think of it as well-founded confidence. Eno laughed, shaking her head. Well, your well-founded confidence is going to get a reality check today. We lined up at the starting point, the anticipation building as we prepared for the race. All right, Eno, I said, my voice filled with excitement, on the count of three, we'll start. Ready? One, Eno counted, her eyes locked on mine. Two, I continued, feeling my heart race with anticipation. Three! We shouted in unison, taking off like a bolt of lightning. We raced through the streets of Kanoha, our laughter mingling with the wind as we pushed each other to go faster. It was exhilarating, the feeling of freedom and friendly competition driving us onward. As we neared the finish line, it was clear that we were evenly matched. Both of us were giving it our all, determined to prove ourselves the victor. In the end, though, I managed to pull ahead just slightly, crossing the finish line with a triumphant grin. Eno huffed, trying to catch her breath as she joined me at the finish line. Fine, Kaushin, she conceded, a smile tugging at her lips, you win this time. But just you wait, I'll get you in the next challenge. I grinned, reaching over to ruffle her hair affectionately. I look forward to it, Eno. And don't worry, I'll make sure to pick out a truly spectacular outfit for you. Eno swatted my hand away, her eyes rolling but her laughter betraying her true feelings. You're insufferable, Kaushin. And yet, I replied, wrapping an arm around her shoulder while pointing at myself, you still seem to like to suffer this condition. Eno leaned into me, her laughter subsiding as she rested her head on my shoulder. Yeah, she admitted softly, I guess I do. We spent the rest of the day browsing the shops, searching for the perfect ridiculous outfit for Eno to wear as punishment for losing our race. Finally, after much debate and laughter, we settled on a flashy, brightly colored outfit complete with an outrageous hat. Eno groaned at the sight of it, but she was a good sport and agreed to wear it the next day. The following morning, I met up with Eno, trying to stifle my laughter as she emerged from her house wearing the ridiculous get-up. To her credit, she wore it with as much grace as possible, though her cheeks were flushed with embarrassment. All right, Kaushin, she muttered, her eyes narrowed playfully, I hope you're enjoying this. Just remember, payback's a, well, you know. I grinned, offering her a mock salute. Duly noted, Eno. But for now, let's just enjoy your moment of, uh, fashion forwardness. As we walked through the village, we were met with a mixture of laughter and confusion from those we passed. Eno, to her credit, held her head high, refusing to let her embarrassment get the best of her. Throughout the day, 
we continued our flirty banter, each teasing remark and sarcastic comment only serving to strengthen our bond. It was clear to anyone who knew us that beneath the surface of our playful rivalry, there was a deep affection and love for one another. As the sun began to set, Eno finally shed her ridiculous outfit, her face a mix of relief and amusement. Well, Kaushin, she said, smirking at me, I hope you enjoyed your victory today. Just remember, next time, it'll be you wearing something utterly humiliating. I laughed, pulling her into a gentle hug. I have no doubt, you know. But for now, let's just enjoy the fact that we have each other. Eno smiled, her eyes shining with warmth as she wrapped her arms around me. That sounds so lame. I pulled back, feigning a hurt expression. Lame? Me? I thought it was pretty sweet. Eno rolled her eyes, but her smile never wavered. Fine, I'll admit it was a little sweet. But don't let it go to your head. Kaushin. I promise, my ego will remain in check, I replied, grinning as I took her hand in mine. Chapter 15 A Nice Surprise We were ten years old now, and things were going pretty smooth. I was top of the class, with Naruto, Hinata, and Ino right behind me. With Danzo six feet under, I had no reason to hold back, and I was shining like a blazing sun. Chakra, 15 to 35. Jinjutsu, Illusion 0 to 20. Summonjutsu, Conjuration 0. Ninjutsu, Destruction 0 to 25. Taijutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block 20 to 45. Healing Jutsu, Restoration 0 to 15. Hinge, Alteration 10 to 30. Fuinjutsu, Enchanting 5 to 25. Smithing, 5 to 15. Bukijutsu, 1 2 handed 15 to 35. Ranged, 20 to 30. Sneak, 30 to 45. Speech, 35 to 50. Alchemy, 0. Miscellaneous, 50 to 70. When my ninjutsu skill finally hit 25, I could activate the first perk, Novice Shinobi. It meant I'd use 10% less chakra for any ninjutsu. Sweet! I could upgrade it five times, reducing chakra usage by a total of 50%. So, I went ahead and spent three of my 17 perk points on it, activating the perk twice. The next three levels were going to cost me more points each time, though. Guess I'd have to level up the skill itself before splurging on those. My taijutsu skill also reached 25, and I unlocked the first perk, Iron Muscles. This bad boy made my muscles harder and more compact, boosting both my attack and defense. I spent three more points on it, leaving me with eleven points. I considered spending six points on upgrading Jinjutsu but decided against it. Leveling up was getting harder, and I didn't want to waste points on something I could achieve with some good old elbow grease. As for my chakra skill, the first perk was about chakra control. But since I knew I could get better at that on my own, I didn't bother spending any points there. Instead, I focused on practicing tree climbing and walking on water, you know, the usual ninja stuff. With Tsunade running the show, healing jutsu and fuin jutsu became mandatory electives for those of us who couldn't nail a perfect ninjutsu score. So, Naruto and I were learning fuin jutsu together, while I also took healing jutsu with Ino. Sakura was in that class too, but no one really cared about her. Even Hinata roped Naruto into taking the healing class. I didn't spend any perk points on Fuinjutsu or Bukijutsu either. I figured I could just practice my writing skills for Fuinjutsu and work on my weapon proficiency for Bukijutsu. Gotta save those points for something better, right? Shurikenjutsu, ranged, was a tad different. Bows or crossbows weren't favorable weapons among shinobi. They were only using kunai, senban, or shuriken. And since there was no string, there was no overdraw perk either. The first perk was, aim, as simple as its name, increase the aim. Still practiced and mastered slowly. No perk points wasted. With only 11 points left, I didn't use them on sneak, speech, or miscellaneous. My sneak skills were pretty decent already, and I was making progress on the next perk, backstab. 
but leveling up was getting harder, and there were still so many perks to gain. Some of them could only be learned with perk points. That's when I stumbled upon something incredible while exploring the village with Naruto. We found the place where Minato had battled Uchiha Bido, and I noticed a strange mark on my minimap. The mark only appeared when I stepped onto the battlefield, and it turned out to be a freaking dungeon. Now, that's what I call a game changer. I ditched Naruto after he slept. Not like I have to sleep. And hey, my sneak is pretty high, and with the 50% boost from the perk, I could easily sneak out to the spot where I saw the dungeon. When I arrived at the skull, a notification appeared before me. To dungeon. It wasn't like the game where I had to enter the cave or gate. I had to select it. And select I did. Floor 1 recommended level 10 to 20. Floor 2 recommended level 20 to 30. Floor 3 recommended level 30 to 40. Floor 4 recommended level 40 to 50. Floor 5 recommended level 50 to 60. Floor 6 recommended level 60-70. The list was going on. Floor 1, I wheeled and in the next second, I disappeared. I found myself on a forest floor with the village away from me. The trees were covering behind, and both sides of me, and the only path I could take was in front. The way the trees were placed was seamless, so I couldn't pass through them. I felt I couldn't destroy them even with the strongest jutsu. I followed the path and in front of me appeared three one-meter-tall foxes with one teal each. There was a red cloak covering their bodies. Looks like Naruto's first QB mode. I fished out Kanai from my bag and held it in reverse grip while smirking at the fox. Boy, did that agitate them? It did. In a second, three of them flashed in front of me. I dodged three claw strikes by crouching and stabbed the Kanai in my hand to one of the fox's belly. The chakra cloak stopped it from penetrating the flesh. Fuck! All right, what you gonna do now, huh, punks? I shouted and threw a smoke ball. When smoke covered the opening, I did hinge and turned it into a stone. I fell with a thud and stood still. After the smoke dispersed, the three foxes looked around in bewilderment, then smelled the ground. After realizing I wasn't anywhere near, they started to walk back and three red dots vanished from the map. Nice. I cancelled the hinge and entered stealth mode. It was a night-themed dungeon, and the forest was dark. I silently walked towards them and held two kanai in my hands. In-game, you couldn't sneak attack two targets at once, but in real life, you could. After I was right behind them, I attacked at their neck, and with, backstab, perk, my attack was critical. Two foxes fell to the ground dead in a matter of seconds, while I attacked the now barely suspecting third. Without further ado, I killed it too. Bukijutsu increased to 31. Nice. I looked at the dead foxes on the ground and approached their bodies. When I did, an option appeared. Search one tail fox. I willed and an inventory list appeared. One tail fox pelt. One tail fox fong. Lesser health potion. Nice, take all and all three items appeared in my inventory. I looked at the other two, but they only had pelt and the fong, no potion. After I finished with them, I followed the path while still sneaking. There were seven skulks of foxes in certain intervals. Each skulk had three one-tailed foxes. I killed them all the same way and arrived at the end of the path. There stood a little bigger fox. Standing 1.5 meters tall, taller than me, with two tails. Its eyes looked more like QB than those with one tail. I approached with stealth, but it still felt my presence. It got edgy all of a sudden while looking around. I still had a chance to do backstab, but it wouldn't kill it. But I still approached. When I was close, the stealth was almost broken, so with a swing, two kanai were about to land on both eyes, but it dodged in a split second. Howl! Fuck! Such a perception. The angry claw landed on my torso, gushing open a wound. I was bleeding profusely while the fox was yelping around. I fished out all my shuriken and attacked from where I was laying. Luckily my aim 
was good and all of the kanai landed from a close distance. But their powers weren't enough to breach the chakra cloak. I threw a smoke bomb and vanished in the shadows once again. The fox was cautious, not like its lesser kind. I uncorked a health potion and bottomed it up before I bleed to death. It knew I was still close, so I moved away silently and hid away for over an hour for it to drop its caution. Stealth was successful. I can't go close to attack, it can feel my presence. I don't have a strong jutsu, no better weapon. I only have a weak jinjutsu, wait of course. How the fuck I forgot jinjutsu? I activated and disrupted its chakra with mine. It stared back at me as my chakra started to seep into his chakra veins. I sacrificed my stealth to see if I could put it in Jinjutsu. After all, Madara and Abito were able to put QB in Jinjutsu. Although I lacked Sharingan, these weren't the real tailed beast either. I didn't know many Jinjutsu, but the one I had was still effective. My chakra started to throw its balance off, and I was able to create an illusion as the fox started to doze off. I approached and raised my two kanai to pierce its eyes. And, what do you know? I did poke its eyes to its brain. Die motherfucker. Shit, that was intense. I sighed as I collapsed. Although it looked easy, it wasn't. If the claw landed on my head I would be dead. Or if the smoke bomb didn't work. I thought I had the level advantage and could clear the dungeon easily but, I am weak. I don't have a strong jutsu. I approached the dead fox and the list appeared once again. Two Tails Fox Pelt Two Tails Fox Fong Lesser Health Potion X2 Perk Point X1 Yes! 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 This is what I am talking about. I wonder if all the floor bosses drop perk points, or I was just lucky. I should repeat the dungeon but after I have more jutsu and weapons. I wonder if I can forge daggers from these fangs. I probably can. Other than that, I should learn jutsu but I don't have access to jutsu in libraries. Maybe I should use the jinjutsu perk to strengthen my talent in that and grind perk points here. I know the logic behind many jutsu but without perks, I am not talented enough to learn them. I haven't even activated the perk for elemental affinities. They are fucking expensive. Elemental affinity? Not even have an element yet. Sigh. I wonder if I don't have any affinity, or it doesn't show because I haven't tested yet. I mean, I am not devoid of ability to make use of the elements. I can use the elemental E-rank jutsu they teach in the academy. I have to test my theory, and level up further. Until then, I should grind the Jinjutsu to activate the first perk. Chapter 16, Suspicious Where the hell is that annoying brat? I muttered to myself as I looked around the house but failed to find one loud blonde. Did he sneak out to eat ramen behind my back? I left the house to find him but couldn't wherever I looked. He wouldn't. I went to the place we used to fish and saw him sitting with the old senile. Naruto was cooking fish for himself and the old Hokage. The third was looking around goofily like a person who lost his mind. Although it didn't seem plausible, it was logical. Third Hokage, the god of Shinobi, a man survived three world wars, Hokage over several decades, a person hailed as kindest by many, a person who lived for his image was beaten publicly. His all dirty deeds revealed in a single night. He was blamed for massacring two noble clans of Kanoha. His hidden orders, the things he let Danzo do. The fact that he let Orochimaru go. When people looked at him with scorn and disgust, he snapped. I used stealth and approached them as I decided to observe more. After Naruto finished cooking, he passed one of the fishes to the old man and started to talk. Grandpa, Kaushin told me that I should be more open with QB. Naruto commented as he patted his belly. For a single second, the old man's eyes sharpened. He didn't look like the foolish self-mask he started to wear ever since he was beaten by Tsunade. It was only a single second but I still caught it. The fuck? This bastard wouldn't hide clothes on his belly to feign fat old man now, would he? Why does Kaushin think so? He asked, confused. From outside, he looked like a small kid, 
unaware of anything. He says, it isn't his fault to be hated. Naruto started, he said, imagine being locked up for decades. Used against your will as a weapon. A tool for destruction. Trapped in people against your wish. What would you feel? And it made sense to me. I don't think QB is evil. I think. He is pitiful. Hokage looked at the blonde and held the sigh in his chest. It is not that simple, Naruto. What do you mean? Naruto asked, but the old man smiled goofily once again. About what? Old man asked, feigning ignorance once again. Fucking old bastard. I left them be, and walked back to the village. Yo, lazy ass and fat ass. I greeted Shikamaru and Choji sitting in the back row. And hello to you, smartass, Choji grumbled. We are buddies so he doesn't mind me calling him fat. They are nice guys, so I became friends with them alongside Naruto. Oh, dog-smelling ass is here too. I looked sideways at Kiba who was snarling at me. Hello Akamaru. How do you know my ass smells like a dog? Are you perhaps an ass-smelling pervert? Kiba asked triumphantly. Kiba, don't act like me. You only embarrass yourself. I am not saying your ass smells like a dog, I am saying you are an ass who smells like a dog. Idiot. Asshole. He howled. Easy boy. Easy. I said while putting my hand on top of his head. That's my boy. That's my boy. Sit. Sit. Fuck you. He shouted. How can you be so energetic in the morning? Naruto asked as he came near us too. Hello, guys. Hello, Naruto. All greeted back. Because I am awesome. That is why. I shrugged it off and sat near the window. Naruto sat in a seat before me. We used to sit together, but the asshole ditched me after he got himself a girlfriend. Seems like it is hoes before brothers now. Shino, my favorite. How are you? I asked as the glasses wearing teen entered. He was always calm and quiet. He reached out his fist to bump with me. I am good. Why? Because I had a nice sleep. Thank you for asking, Kaushin-san. Good, good. Hello, guys. A pink head approached and sat in front of Naruto. Hello, Naruto. Hello, Sakura-san. Naruto greeted her back calmly. That's my boy. Not long after Hinata too arrived and sat beside Naruto. Hello, everyone. Hello, princess. How are you today? Naruto asked, making her blush and making me puke. All good. Naruto-kun, how are you? Hinata asked back and the shocking thing, no stutter. A little sleepy, that is all. What are we eating today? Asked the boy. Can you believe him? Hinata was bringing him bento every day and this boy had the audacity to ask what she brought. As they were talking sweetly, a blonde entered the classroom. She looked over the empty spot near me but settled beside her best friend, not for long. Ah, Aino. She is beautiful. We are playing a long game of teasing, but soon it will end in victory for both of us. Soon. After a boring history class, which I smashed, I mean I know more than any of these living fools do, so yeah, my favorite healing class started. Why my favorite you ask? Because Eno and I are taking it together. Hello, Kaushinkuen. She greeted coyly. Hello, Pumpkin Chan. I greeted her much to her embarrassment. Now the story is interesting. When we first started to take healing class together, we were asked to work on pumpkins. For real. Since we were too amateur to work on actual humans, we had to diagnose and heal the pumpkins. Ino and I were working together while Naruto and Hinata were next to us. When Naruto used too much chakra, the pumpkin exploded, he panicked like he killed a patient, by the way. It was hilarious, pumpkin parts sprayed all over us. Some of them on Eno's face. So, I, as a gentleman, 
offered to clear her face. Welp, my hands were covered with pumpkin too, and I didn't have a napkin. So as the situation compelled me, I cleared her face by licking. Nothing perverted, I swear. And before the blaming crew arrives, I am ten years old as the rest of the class. I know I have a previous life, but I don't have any experience of that life. I might have died while I was ten or one hundred, I don't know. All I know is I am a ten years old boy with lots of information about fiction and a cheat. Anyways, after I licked her face, once, I said, you taste like a pumpkin. So, it stuck with her. Hello, class. I am glad to see you again. Shizen entered like a boss and greeted the class. She was a little younger than I remember her, but she is still a fine medical kunoichi. She is teaching us kids, and she is doing a damn good job. She started with chakra control and then the theory. While we're learning theories, she also demonstrated actual jutsu on real patients, but we only watched. All in all, the class was going well. After the class, four of us went to Ichiraku Ramen to celebrate our first real test. On frogs, still good. With my perks, my healing is much stronger than normal. Double cast, and the extra percentage that comes with novice healer increased the prowess of my mystical palm technique. Welcome girls and boys. What should I get you? Tauchi asked as we entered. Hello, Tachi-san. I greeted, a bowl of miso for me please. Special. Ten times. Guess who? A pork ramen, please, Hinata ordered. A special one too. Eno too ordered. Right away. He said and vanished inside. Instead of him, his daughter appeared and greeted us. Ah, look at the lovebirds. I am looked at us adoringly. I am San, you are going to make my pumpkin blush. She is too shy to accept it yet. I said, making Eno beat red. I, we, she mumbled but couldn't form a sentence. Ha ha. I am laughed as she looked at blushing Eno. Aren't you adorable? She is. I nodded sagely as I put my hand around her waist. But too shy, sigh. Kaoshin! She shouted and wanted to storm off, but I caught her hands. Pumpkin, calm down, please. Is it bad for me to show my affection? If it is, I will stop. It is not, but not in front of everyone. She gazed at the ground while saying softly, I want everyone to know you are mine, and I am yours. What is there to be embarrassed about? I asked boldly. She looked shocked. Then nodded coyly. Good, let's eat. The food was heavenly. I had my doubts too, but this place really knows how to cook. Hell, there were even theories at the beginning of the story that Toby was actually Tuchi, and he was spying on the village secretly. Then when Atsutsukis were introduced, some said this shop owner was an alien and was spying on Indra and Ashura's incarnations all the time. Of course, all were jokes, but the fact remains, the food is damn good. Chapter 17 Angry Father-in-Law Before we start, I know, there's too much romance, but I promise the next chapter will be about graduation and there won't be any romance for a while after that. So I wrote this one for the road. Have fun! Inoichi walked Eno to the door and gave me a stern warning bring her by eight in the evening and no funny stuff, you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, father-in-law. I stood in attention and saluted. Don't call me that you little twat. Inoichi boiled in anger, just because my princess is blind temporarily, it doesn't mean you will get together for life. Wow, so uncalled for, father-in-law. This broke my tender heart. I held my chest as I gave Eno a puppy look. Cut the crap, both of you. Eno stomped on the ground, Dad. Stop embarrassing me. And Co, I swear I will cancel if you act like a spoiled kid. Princess, why are you calling him with a dormant? Inoichi was shot by imaginary arrows, pierced through his heart. That is enough, dear. A woman walked from inside as she pinched Inoichi's waist. Ah. Aw. 
Inoichi cried as Ino's mother, Ima smiled at me, Kaushinchan, you are welcome to dinner after your little date. I sure will, mother-in-law. I smiled much to the old lady's amusement. Have fun, kids. Don't worry, I will make sure this stinky old man doesn't follow you. You are the best, mother-in-law, I don't want shurikens to rain down on me while I kiss, Pumpkinchan. I shouted from afar with Eno's hands in mine. Eno giggled at my silly remark as we walked down the street, her fingers tightly interlocked with mine. It was a warm summer evening, and the sun had just begun to set, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink. So, where are we going? Eno asked, breaking the comfortable silence. It's a surprise, I replied, giving her hand a gentle squeeze. But don't worry, it's not too far away. As we walked, Eno began to tell me about her day. She had spent most of it training with her father, but they had managed to squeeze in some time for her to work on her flower arrangements with Ima, which she loved doing in her free time. She even explained in detail how it turned out. That's amazing, Eno, I said, genuinely impressed. You're so talented. Eno smiled, and her cheeks turned a light shade of pink. Thanks, Ko. I'm glad you think so. We arrived at a small park that was tucked away between two buildings. It was a quiet, peaceful spot I discovered while wandering around the village, with a small pond in the center and a bridge that spanned across it. I had brought a picnic blanket and a basket filled with food, and I spread the blanket out on the grass, motioning for Eno to sit down. I hope you like cherry tomatoes with light green salad and puddings, I said, pulling out a tray of assorted bowls from the basket. Eno's eyes lit up. I love cherries and pudding. How did you know? I have my ways, I said with a wink, passing her a pair of chopsticks. We talked and laughed as we ate, enjoying each other's company. I want to become a strong kunoichi, but I believe my talent is limited. Stop that right now, missy. I said assertively. Eno was taken aback. I don't care what you think, but I know you are talented. You can doubt yourself all you want, but you cannot doubt my omni-observations. I said you are talented, and if you say you are not, it means you don't believe me. Ko! She was mad, amused and emotional all at once as she looked at me. You are a big arrogant jerk, you know that? Woman, I just said omni-observation. Of course I know I am one handsome, arrogant, amazing, one-of-a-kind jerk. You know... I'm really glad we're doing this, Eno said after a hearty giggle, her gaze fixed on the pond. I nodded in agreement, placing my arm around her and pulled her to my chest. Man, I don't know why, but it feels good to have your partner in this position. I don't care if you are into dicks or chicks, but wrapping your loved one and pulling them to your chest hits different. As the night drew to a close, I walked Eno back to her house, the moon casting a soft glow over us. It looked kind of romantic, not gonna lie. So, you know, have I ever told you about this funny jester and his girlfriend? You have a girlfriend? Eno said with a mock shock on her dainty face. Ha ha. I laughed dryly but secretly impressed, and way, this guy, Saka, fell in love with this woman from a tribe far from his. The girl was sick when she was really small so her father begged the moon spirit to bless her and in the end, she got better but her hair turned all white. He was just a common boy whereas the girl was princess of the tribe, but the guy was a brave warrior, and in the end he won the heart of the girl. But as they started to open up to each other, the tribe was attacked by a really strong country, and the avatar of the moon spirit was injured. The avatar was key to balance so the girl sacrificed her life to heal the avatar and became the moon. What a shitty story is this Kaushin? Eno asked as she let go of my hand. You take that back. I said while looking at her offended. I mean why are you telling me this now? Eno asked with anger in her eyes. You are Eno. You are the moon. So, if the day comes and balance is at stake, and the world is about to be destroyed, screw the moon, screw the balance and screw the world. Because if you sacrifice yourself, I will bring you back and be very angry, okay? Oh! Eno said as she was taken aback as a red hue climbed up to her face-o. 
Yeah. No one is more important than you. I looked at her eyes. We walked a little longer and soon we were at the door of her house. I had a great time, Ko, Eno said, turning to face me. Thank you for tonight. Anytime, Eno, I replied, I hope we can do it again soon. Eno smiled, and before I could say anything else, she leaned in and pressed her lips to my cheek in a soft, sweet kiss. It was brief, sadly and on the cheek, again sadly. I'll see you soon, Eno whispered before turning and disappearing inside her house. Sooner than you expect. Did you forget I am invited to dinner? I chuckled and walked in. It is going to be an awkward dinner. Chapter 18 Graduation The ten jutsu required to graduate in this chapter were copied from another fanfiction. I liked the idea and had something similar in mind, so I implemented it. Sadly, that fanfic was dropped. Anyway, have fun. Let's see who is the best in class. Naruto shouted as we were forced to battle against each other. Right, let's. I lazily said while reaching my hand out Naruto grabbed it for the seal of confrontation. Begin, Irika shouted as Naruto dashed towards me. He was not anything like he appeared in the shows. He was wearing black pants and a gray t-shirt with the Uzumaki symbol on the back. He was smart and calculating. With his endless stamina and strong physique, he was a pain in my ass. But I was not weak either. With my cheat, my body was much stronger than my peers. I grabbed Naruto's punch and swung my leg to his. He jumped to dodge by using my hand as support and his two feet aimed at my face. I released his hand to break his balance and crouched. While he was falling, I kicked him in the chest, but he grabbed it with one hand and used the other to stand straight. His two feet in the air swirled to hit me, fortunately, my hands were still free. But with a sudden pull on the foot he was holding, he toppled me, and I was about to fall face first. I hopped on my one leg, with his two legs in my hands, while my one leg was in his. When I was in the air, I somersaulted and threw him to the edge of the ring. He regained his footing without falling down and smirked. Seems like we are still even. You wish. I smiled and dashed at him also. When I stood before him, I punched his chest, but it was only a feint. He attempted to block it, but in the nick of time, I altered the direction of my strike and connected my fist with his chin. He did a loop in the air and landed on his leg as a red bruise appeared on his face. Why, you! He shouted and dashed towards me. He was swift and he reached me within a second. I observed his legs to anticipate his next attack, but he was not easy to predict. With a faint double punch, he kicked my shin, then kneed my chest. You little! I grabbed his arm and kicked his face too. Enough! Good job to both of you. Irika ended the match with a smile. Seal of reconciliation. We both reached out our hands and left the stage. You are getting better, little bro. I ruffled his head. Hee hee. I will be Hokage, of course, I am. He answered. Still can't beat you though, the score is twelve to null, and of course hundreds of ties. That is normal. If I lose to my baby brother, how can I live? I said jokingly. I am not a baby. He pouted while I laughed. Eno and Hinata walked to us. Congratulations to both of you. Hinata smiled as she went to Naruto. Good job, Ko, Naruto. Eno came to my side. Over time, our relationship progressed while I was helping her in healing classes, and we were officially darlings. Thank you, Pumpkin. Come, give me a kiss. I said while puckered my lips. Not in front of everyone. Eno ran away in shame. While we were fooling around the battles ended and the next class started. All right, class, tomorrow is the graduation exam. You already had the written exam and learned your scores. Congratulations, Kaushin, full score again. Irika said and continued. You probably will be the rookie of the year this year. Thanks, Sensei, I replied with a smile. Were Haruzen or Danzo still in power, 
I would have concealed my power, but with Tsunade, there was no need. Once class had ended, Naruto and I took our sweethearts to Ichiraku. Since I had been a part of his life since he was young, he had been eating healthy food, but occasionally, we would indulge in the heavenly ramen from this shop. All right, I don't know the taste of the food in my previous life, but this ramen was the best food in all of Kanoha. Even better than the food I cook with my over-70 mastery. How is that even possible? The next day we arrived at the class for the jutsu test. Now, ever since Tsunade became Okage, a lot had changed. There were no longer just three jutsu to learn for graduation. There were alternative graduation exams, such as the medical exam and fuin jutsu exam. Of course, anyone who could use medical jutsu or fuin jutsu could also use the three jutsu required for previous graduation. However, things had changed even further. Now, each jinin had to learn ten additional jutsu that any shinobi would need in the wilderness. These included futon, fresh air, which could be used to prevent enemies or animals from locating you by preventing the dispersion of smells. Futon, upper wind created an area of wind flowing upwards and could be used to remove all smells by sending them upwards. Suetun, clean water was a simple jutsu that sourced clean water from the atmosphere. Suetun, cleanse filtered the water source to purify the water. Dotan, hole opened a small hole for various reasons, while Dotan, Close closed small holes. Katan, spark could light a campfire with a small flame to start the fire, while Katan, smoke created smoke to prevent animals from approaching. Raitan, static charge created a sphere of lightning to kill bugs in the air while camping, and Raitan, taser was not strong enough to taste, but could help those on night watch stay awake. All of these jutsu were irank and not hard to learn, but some people had no talent for them. Naruto, despite all my interference, still couldn't learn them except for Futon, thanks to his natural element. Luckily, he had a genius big brother who taught him jutsu. Me? Well, being a gamer, all I had to do was touch the scrolls and they were recorded in my skill list. This cheat was awesome, but just like in the game, the scroll would be destroyed. Luckily, the ten jutsu taught in the academy were copy scrolls so even if they were destroyed, it didn't cause me any problems. Kaoshin! The Rookie of the Year! Mizuki said with an exaggerated tone. Come, show us your talent. Sure. I walked in and started forming hand seals. Oh, since I mentioned hand seals, there is an entire branch of them under the chakra skill tree. Hand seals have four perks. Over the years, I have either used points to acquire them or mastered them on my own. The perks I have are, speedy hands, increases the speed of my hands when forming seals. There are five levels to this perk, and I unlocked the first three by practicing. I used 16 points to unlock the last two. Let's say that my speed of seal cannot be matched. The second perk was, chakra in hand, allowing me to understand the nature of hand seals, why a certain seal forms a certain jutsu. 30. Points well spent, as it allowed me to comprehend seals and create my own jutsu. Of course, I did not show off in front of my sensei. I used moderate speed faster than a jinin to create three clones. One of them resembled Tsunade, one resembled Mizuki, and one resembled Irika. Mizuki, Irika. How many times must I tell you? Kaoshin is a genius. Why do you test him? Naturally, ordinary clones were illusory and unable to speak. I imitated Tsunade's voice by concealing myself behind the clone. Two jutsu combined. Good job, Kaoshin. A bit smug, but you earned it, praised Irika. Thank you, Sensei, I replied as I executed the following ten jutsu and demonstrated them one by one. We omitted Kawarimi as it was bothersome, and I received my headband. I chose to wear it as an armband rather than on my forehead. Congratulations, Kaoshin. Return tomorrow to learn your Jinin team, informed Irika. Thank you for everything, Irika sensei Mizuki-sensei. See you later. And with that, I vanished. Chapter 19, Idiots Be Idiots Rookie 9, of course, 
me instead of Sasuke, graduated without any hitch. Naruto's results were stellar, falling short only to mine. Next being Hinata, followed by Ino, Shikamaru, Shino, and others. Of course, despite being a fine kunoichi, Hinata and Ino graduated with the medical exam as well. There were several reasons for that, the major one was, every team ever since Tsunade became Hokage would have a member capable of healing. Despite Naruto's and my achievements in healing Jutsu, we skipped the exam so we could be put in the same team with either Ino or Hinata. We decided no one would make a fuss in case we weren't on the same team. Of course, some things didn't change at all. Just after our graduation and getting the headbands, in my case an armband, Mizuki approached us. Naruto, can I speak with you for a while? He asked. I looked at the future trader and nodded at Naruto. I of course remembered the plot and what Mizuki was, but for the benefit of the doubt, I let him be until now. Sure, he was a major asshole over the years, but that could still be attributed to his hate for QB. It didn't mean he was a traitor. Well, I wasn't strong enough to end him anyways, but yeah, I let him be. Now, he approached Naruto anyway. You guys, go ahead and order me miso ramen, I will be back pretty soon. Naruto nodded as he went away with Mizuki. Ten of them. I pulled two girls towards the Ichiraku while thinking what Mizuki would do. This time, Naruto earned his headband. Mizuki couldn't trick him with that. When we arrived and ordered the food, Naruto too came to our side with a restless face. He sat down and started to eat. So, what did Mizuki-sensei say, Naruto? Ino asked while ironically eating a bowl of pork ramen. He wanted to congratulate me. Yep, that is all. Naruto didn't raise his face from his miso ramen and said uneasily. Hmm, strange. Why only you and alone at that? Ino pressed but Naruto shrugged it off. After we ate and dropped the girls into their homes, I took Naruto back to our house. So, what did Mizuki say? I asked. Nothing, like I said. He wanted to congratulate me. Naruto said while evading my eyes. Naruto, I have to know, because I think he is up to no good, I said while giving him an assuring smile. What do you mean? Naruto asked. Did he tell you there is a secret exam to really become a genin? I asked. How? How did you know? Naruto asked in disbelief. Guessed. But just know, he is lying. I sighed. Of course, I could guess to some extent, but the reason why I really knew was this. Little brother. Your little brother, tricked by Trader Mizuki to do a task for him, might end up with his death. As his big brother, show him the right way and protect him. Objectives. Optional, inform Hokage. Optional, let Naruto know the nature of the traitor. Save Naruto from his imminent death. Optional, kill Mizuki. Optional, learn from Scroll of Seal, fake. Optional, convince Tsunade to give the fake Scroll of Seal with real Jutsu to Naruto and learn from it. Optional, loot Mizuki. Naruto, Mizuki is most likely a traitor. So tell me, what did he ask from you? He wanted me to steal a scroll from Okage Tower. He said each Jin and Tabi had to complete a task as a final test. And as a shinobi, I shouldn't reveal the task given to me. Naruto said with anger and sadness. I am still stupid. No, Naruto. You just see good in people. That is a commendable quality. You are a good person. I am proud to be your brother. I calmed him down as I patted him. Let's go see Tsunade. What are we going to see Grandma Tsunade for? Naruto asked. We have a task to finish, don't we? I smirked as I pulled him over. Oh, let's do Henge first. Plain face and plain clothes, got it? Yeah. He said and turned into a regular ninja. I, too, did the hinge. My hinge skill tree, alteration, was at 30. The first perk at 25 allowed me to use hinge with 10% less chakra 
the same as ninja to perk. I trained and activated the perk three times already, so my hench cost 30% less chakra. And I sped points to activate the second perk. Double cast, using the same jutsu twice efficiently, making it twice stronger. So, it is safe to say that my hench jutsu is one of a kind. I sincerely believe that at the peak, not even Rinnegan can see through my hench. When we arrived at the Hokage's office, she was drowned by a mountain of papers. We entered through the door without asking, and she was about to wreak her anger on us, but she noticed Naruto's somewhat weaker hinge. Drop the hinge and come out. She ordered Naruto. Ah, man. Why can't I trick you? Naruto dropped the illusion and came out. Tsunade looked smug, but when I dropped hinge too, she looked gobsmacked. What? Kaoshin! I didn't know you were hinged too. Tsunade asked with surprise. He. I am a genius, it is to be expected. I answered with equal smug. Yes, yes. You are. She sighed. So, what brought you here? We have a Judas on loose, I said and did a signal for her to seal the room. She looked at my hand and ANBU guarding her disappeared. She clicked a button and a seal shield covered the room. Care to tell me what is going on? Go on, Naruto. I pushed him forward and he started to explain. After our graduation, Mizuki approached me and wanted to speak with me in private. He said the exam we passed was just the first step of the real exam. To cull the herd. He started uncertainly. That bastard. Tsunade exploded in anger. Wait. Is it true? Naruto asked with squinted eyes. No, what else? Tsunade too squinted her eyes and wanted him to continue. Anyway, he said that my task was to steal a scroll from the Hokage Tower. A big-ass scroll in the hidden room. He even told me how to find it. Naruto ended and looked at the woman. That baseborn traitor. I will skin him. Tsunade shouted as she pulled out a bottle of sake and drank from the bottle. You can go. I will deal with it. Yes, Grandma Tsunade. Naruto was about to go but I stopped him. Hokage-sama, with all due respect. I started, Tsunade looked at me with a squint. Mizuki is no idiot. He is patient, cunning, and dangerous. If he smells something is wrong, you might let him escape, and it would be dangerous. Speech increased to 59. What do you suggest? She asked. We should let Naruto have the scroll of seals and pull Mizuki over. When he is in our ambush, the team of your choice can bring him to justice. I suggested. Impossible. Tsunade slapped the table. I can't, under no circumstances, let the scroll of seals leave the building. It seems impossible to convince her. I shouldn't push it. I didn't say the real one, Hokage-sama, I smirked. She looked intrigued. You can create a fake one with some not-so-dangerous jutsu. After all, it would be odd if there were no jutsu in the scroll. Naruto would try to learn them and Mizuki would be convinced that it is the real scroll. Not bad. Tsunade pondered while taking another sip from the bottle. All right, I will copy the scroll, just wait here. I have to do it right, or I am screwed. Hokage-sama, I stopped her. What else? She asked with anger. In case he gets away with the scroll, we should take precautions. Chapter 20, Heist Here is the scroll. Tsunade passed it to Naruto, while the latter strapped it to his back. Be sure to learn as much as you can. They will help you. Yes, Grandma Tsunade. Naruto beamed like a kid given candy. Let me help you with that, Naruto. I walked near him and touched the thick scroll and helped Naruto to tie the scroll. As soon as I touched it, notifications appeared in front of me. Of course, I would learn them all but not now. You are okay, Kaoshin? Tsunade asked. Only then I realized I was frozen while reading the notification of the jutsu list. Yeah, sorry. 
I was thinking, maybe I should hide with Naruto, just to make sure he is okay. Also to make sure the scroll doesn't fall into enemy hands. That would be dangerous. If Mizuki notices you, he will escape or something more dangerous. Tsunade said. Oh, I assure you. He will not see me at all. I smirked and used hinge. The next second I turned into a kunai and fell to the ground. How spectacular! Tsunade exclaimed as she held me. Barely noticeable. Of course, I spent lots of points on this shitty perk. Fifty of them. Inorganic hinge. Allow me to hinge into inorganic things. All right, keep this close to you, Naruto. Tsunade passed me over and Naruto placed me in his kunai holster. Bastard. Now, off you go. I will learn all these jutsu in a day. Naruto shouted and ran off to the dark night. To make it believable, Tsunade after half an hour raised the alarms and let everyone know Naruto stole the scroll of sealing. While every chunin in the village was looking for the blonde, Naruto was in the opening near the forest, learning jutsu. I can't learn Rasengan without prior training. It is too hard. He complained. At least I learned Kage Bunshin. Use clones to learn other jutsu. My voice traveled to his ears. What? That works? He asked but I didn't answer. He immediately formed five clones and each pair learned the rest of the three jutsu. Yes. I learned this one too. Naruto exclaimed as he threw a shuriken, formed seals, and it became tins in a second. There are no tiles in here, so I have to use this one later, but it seems like I learned it too. Naruto nodded while looking at the last one. This one is too hard. Well, well. If it isn't my favorite student, Naruto. A voice arrived behind his back, and Naruto jerked back. Irika sensei what are you doing here? Naruto asked. Shit! I forgot he would find Naruto first. Naruto, idiot, did you steal the scroll of seals? Irika asked. But, but... This was the exam Mizuki sensei gave to me. Naruto said in panic when he was questioned by his former teacher. What exam? Irika asked in shock. Can he be? Before he could finish, a barrage of kunai rained down on two of them. Irika pushed Naruto away and kunai pierced all over his body. Naruto, give me the scroll, Mizuki said while looking down on them. Irika wanted Naruto to run while he stalled Mizuki, but Naruto wasn't willing to. He knew ANBU was near, all he had to do was delay Mizuki. But I long ago informed Naruto to battle himself. Naruto formed a seal and hundreds of him appeared in front of Mizuki. Although surprised, Mizuki was a lot more clear-headed. Naruto wasn't the shinobi who couldn't even form a clone now. His taijutsu was spectacular and he was talented, making Mizuki much more cautious. He didn't underestimate him from the beginning. Mizuki and Naruto battled for over three minutes and ANBU was about to arrive. Naruto, reluctantly, fished out his last kunai and threw it. It flew by near Mizuki's head, and when it was on his back, with a cloud of smoke I appeared on his back. With a kunai in my hand and Fuma Shuriken in his, I stabbed him in the back of his neck. Perfect. Mizuki fell to the ground and died in mere seconds. Naruto, give me the scroll so I can destroy it. I asked and he passed. I had no time. He passed the scroll and I wrapped ten explosive tags on the scroll. I walked a little distance away from the duo but made sure they could still see me. I activated the explosive tags and threw the big-ass scroll while accepting the notification. Jutsu, Multikage Bunshin has been learned. Jutsu, Shuriken Kage Bunshin has been learned. Jutsu, Roof Tile Shuriken has been learned. Jutsu, Raisin has been learned. That is it? Man. No flying thunder god, no dead consuming seal, no eight trigram sealing technique, and not even Edo Tensei. I am disappointed. I risked so much for this. I spent over fifty perk points, goddammit. 
The scroll vanished at the same time tags exploded and no evidence was left behind. Ko, are you okay? Naruto asked while helping Iroko with healing Jutsu. I am fine. How is Sensei? I asked while searching Mizuki's body. Since he burned bridges, he gathered everything he owned and was ready to run away. On his body, there were two sealing scrolls. One for Jutsu and one for weapons and money. I put them all in inventory. After I picked up two Fuma Shuriken, I walked near Iruka and started to heal him too. Kaushin, why were you with Naruto and in Kunai form? Iruka asked. We were aware of Mizuki's ploy, Iruka. Tsunade arrived as she checked on Iruka. Nice job, two of you. Thanks, Grandma. Naruto said sheepishly. Thanks, Hokage-sama, I answered too. Scroll? She asked. Turned into ashes. I answered. She looked at the ashes not far from us and to Iruka who nodded back. Learned any jutsu, Naruto? Learned all beside Raisingan. Naruto sighed, it is too hard. No worries, you can learn that later. Tsunade smiled and looked at the body on the ground. Kaushin, are you okay? Tsunade asked. She was asking if I was okay after killing a person. I was. I didn't feel anything at all. I am. Tsunade-sama. He was going to kill Naruto. I couldn't let that happen. I said with a fake grimace. Okay, if you need, you can talk to me. Thank you, Hokage-sama. Hokage-sama, Iruka started. If you knew, why did you trick us? I had to. She sighed. If I didn't alert the village, Mizuki would know something was amiss. I understand. Thank you, Hokage-sama. Iruka answered. Tsunade looked at the two shuriken in my hand and the body, fine. You can keep the loot. Hey. I laughed as the night ended. We went home with Naruto and collapsed in his bed. I didn't need to sleep as always, but the village was in turmoil tonight. Can't sneak out for a dungeon tonight. Chapter, Team 7 I entered the class with Naruto, Hinata, and Ino in tow. We sat near the back and waited for Iruka to enter. Today, we were going to meet with our Jounin sensei and begin our Jin and career. Iruka entered not long after and started with an opening speech. I am proud of all of you for being able to graduate. I know the exams were a lot harder than the previous years, but be assured that Tsunade-sama did it for your own good. Anyone who graduated under these conditions will have a better future. True, there were a lot fewer people who were able to graduate. They were mostly cannon fodders, but still, now that graduation requirements were a lot harder, those who were able to graduate were better than the small fries. Teams were the same, the same as in I don't know the first six. Though, there were a few surprises due to my past actions. Team 7 Iruka started, Kaushin, Uzumaki Naruto, Hyuga Hinata. Yes! Naruto and Hinata shouted at the same time and hugged, while Ino and I were sad. I hugged her too. It is fine. Some other team needs you to lead them. I whispered to her ears. Hmm, she nodded with a blush. Team 8, Inazuka Kiba, Aburame Shino, Haruno Sakura. Team 10, Akimichi Chuji, Nara Shikamaru and Yamanaka Ino. My best wishes for your new career, and remember the will of fire. With it, he left and Jaun and Sensei came to pick their students. Except ours. So, who is our Sensei? Asked Naruto. Didn't you listen to Iruka Sensei? It is Kakashi Sensei? I said with a sigh. Is he good? Naruto asked. Is he good? I asked with exaggerated shock. Graduated from the academy at the age of five, became a chunin at six and jounin at eleven. Tell me if he is good. Wow! He is a legend! Naruto exclaimed. I heard of him from father. He is known as Kakashi of the Sharingan or Copy Ninja Kakashi. Hinata added. Sharingan? What is that? 
Naruto asked. You are truly an idiot, Naruto. I sighed. Hinata you deal with your boyfriend. Sharingan is one of the three, she started to explain while we waited. Kakashi was the last person with Sharingan and Konoha. I killed Sasuke, which kinda caused Itachi to kill Danzo. How tricky fate is sometimes. After a while, Kakashi entered through the gate while the three of us were working on Fuinjutsu. Naruto was a talent despite being an idiot, and Hinata didn't like fighting so healing Jutsu and Fuinjutsu were a cup of tea. When Kakashi entered and saw us he said, My first impression is. I like you. You are late, Naruto shouted. Now, now. A cute girl stopped me, so I danced. Liar! Naruto shouted. Was she hot? I asked. She was. Nice. You might be my favorite student. Kakashi I smiled as he flickered to the roof. We followed. Now, let's introduce ourselves. Why don't you start first, Sensei? I asked. Hmm, sure. He said, I'm Hataki Kakashi. Things I like and things I hate. I don't feel like telling you that. My dreams for the future, never really thought about it. As for my hobbies. I have lots of hobbies. Now you, Blondie. Which one? Naruto asked. You, with the whiskers. Kakashi sighed. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. I like Hinata-chan, Kaushin, Grandma Sinade, Ino, and ramen, and I really like to eat ramen with my friends. I hate waiting for ramen after water is poured. My dream is to be Hokage, the strongest shinobi in the village, and when I do, I will bring back Sasuke's brother to the village to make him apologize. Okay, good. Next. My name is Hyuga Hinata. My dream is to help Naruto become Hokage and help the village. I don't like fighting, so I want to master Fuinjutsu and healing jutsu. I also like spending time with Naruto, Kaushin and Ino. I also love my family, especially my sister. You. Kakashi pointed at me. Hmm, never thought before. Now that I think of it, I should have. All right, my name is Kaushin, no last name. My dream is to become strong enough to prevent anyone from taking away people I care about and destroy those even thinking of it. I like working out and getting stronger, I also like spending time with my friends. I used to think I should work out all the time so I could become stronger as soon as possible, but I realized I should spend time with my friends as much as I can. Duty is important for sure, but those who ignore their friends for power and duty are thrash. Kakashi looked at me shocked for a full minute. Just the effect I wanted. I could quote a Beto word by word but implying the same meaning with different words would have a better effect and less suspicion. Sensei, are you okay? Hinata asked when she saw he was frozen. Yeah, sorry. Now, tomorrow at 7 in the morning we will meet in training ground 7 for your final exam. Kakashi said while looking cold again. What do you mean final exam? Haven't we already passed the exam phase? Naruto asked. Graduating was just the first phase. If you don't pass the exam tomorrow, you will be sent back to the academy. That can't be. Naruto cried. Oh, and come without eating, or you might throw up. With it, he vanished. What are we going to do? I don't want to go back to the academy. Naruto started to panic. Cool down, little brother. I pulled his collar to make him sit. We three are the best in the class, if we can't pass, no one can. Just calm down. Oh right. Naruto sighed in relief. All right. We will ace the exam tomorrow. Sure we will, I smirked. Seven in the morning, three of us were standing in front of the training ground. I knew Kakashi would be late, and we had to eat, but I just let it be. Hell, even I didn't eat, Welp, I don't need to eat. After some hours, Kakashi arrived. You are late! Naruto shouted. Now, now. A black cat crossed my path, so I had to take a detour. 
Kakashi said goofily. Liar! Naruto shouted. Was Niko-chan cute? I asked. It was okay. Kakashi smiled back. Anyway, this clock is set to twelve o'clock. Before noon, you have to take these two bells from me. Otherwise, you will not be able to eat lunch. I will tie you to logs over there and eat in front of you. We were tricked. Naruto cried. We sure did. I sighed. Sensei, there are two bells. Hinata asked. Well, two of you will pass and the third will fail and return to the academy. Kakashi smiled as he explained. It can be one of you or all of you. Use your shuriken and kunai. Attack me with intent to kill, or you will not be able to take them. No one complained this time, because unlike the original, there was no useless Pinkett, nor stupid Naruto. Welp, overly stupid. You will start when I say go. Go! Chapter 22, Bell Test On me! I shouted as I dashed off to the forest. Naruto and Hinata followed behind me as we hid in the forest. I knew Kakashi wouldn't follow us, so I sat on the ground and started to think. Why are we running, Ko? We need to battle with Sensei. Naruto asked with a whisper. He is a jounin fool. We need to make a plan first. I said. Hinata, can you see him? She activated her Byakugan without hand seals and looked at the opening. He is reading a book. Good, now we all know each other since we always train together, but if you learned anything new, let me know. Nothing new, Naruto reported. Nothing new on my side either. Hinata too reported. All right, this is the plan. You got it? I asked. Yeah, sounds good. Hmm. Okay. Let's go. Kakashi looked at the forest. Here they come. He thought to himself and looked at twenty Naruto and single Hanana and Kaushin. Not bad. He praised as he put the book back in his bag. Seems like I won't be able to read it. It is stupid of you to think you could from the start. Naruto taunted as he charged. I will test my power. You two stay back. Sigh, here I thought you were smart. Kakashi looked deadpan as he parried Naruto's attacks. First lesson, Taijutsu. Naruto punched his head, but Kakashi easily deflected and appeared behind him. Kanoha's secret jutsu, 1,000 years of death. With a tiger seal, he pierced Naruto's nether region, but with a puff, the clone dissipated. Let's attack together, Hinata shouted and charged. Kakashi looked at the kunoichi and formed hand seals. Second lesson, Jinjutsu. While Hinata stopped on her track, 19 Naruto charged at Kakashi. While Kakashi was deflecting all of their attacks, another two Naruto appeared behind him and held him tight. One of the Narutos threw a kunai and formed hand seals. Kageshurikin Jutsu. The kunai multiplied as all of them flew towards Kakashi. The Jounin looked unimpressed. Finally got you, Naruto shouted and he punched the hell-tight Kakashi while a bunch of kunai were flying towards them behind his back. Even if Kakashi dodged the punch, the kunai would rain on them. But when the punch landed, it was another Naruto in his place. Naruto who was punched dissipated to smoke. And when kunai appeared, other Naruto's too dissipated with smoke. Such an advanced Kawarimi. Kaushin sighed as he looked around. When he found the target, he formed hand signs. Right hun, lightning ball. He can use advanced jutsu despite being a fresh-out jinin. Kakashi was impressed and formed hand seals of his own. Ketan, fireball. The fire jutsu dispelled the lightning and moved towards Naruto and Kaushin even faster. When all clones dissipated Kakashi appeared from the ground and grabbed the ankles of Naruto and Kaushin, pulled them to the ground. Third lesson, ninjutsu. Well, you all lost, Kakashi said with a deadpan face while looking at the Hinata under Jinjutsu and two boys on the ground. But all of a sudden all three of them dissipated. All three? Kakashi was shocked. 
He looked behind and deflected the Fuma shuriken coming towards him. Shit, Kage shuriken? There was another shuriken under the original moving towards him, he couldn't even deflect it at this point. With no other choice, he jumped. But when shuriken passed him it turned into Naruto and jumped on him. Kakashi was still in the air and his hand was full. The first shuriken he deflected turned into Inanna and she too grabbed his arms. Kakashi looked at both of them in shock when he felt something moving on his belt. He looked down and saw the absence of bells. How? He looked at Kaushin in shock. A shinobi must see the hidden beneath the hidden, smirked the blonde boy with purple eyes. You turned into stone when other clones got destroyed. You used the smoke to your advantage to use henge. Very good. I am impressed. Kakashi didn't hold back his praises. If you had used your Sharingan it would be all useless. Kaushin retorted. It would, but I didn't and you won. Kakashi was happy. We passed the secret test too, right? Since we worked together? Kaushin asked. How do you know? Kakashi asked. This test, first conducted by 3rd Hokage Saratobi Hiruzen, then Toadsen in Jiraiya, then 4th Hokage Namikaze Minato, your own sensei. Kaushin started to list while Kakashi was gobsmacked. I like reading, the boy shrugged. Yes, you passed my test. Congratulations kids, from now on we are Team 7. Kaushin, spectacular planning and display. When I am not around, you are the team leader. Yes, sir. Phew, that was harder than I thought. Although I used a few tactics from the original series, I was able to see it through. From the start, only my body was real. All the Naruto's and Hinata were clones of his. While I mingled between them, staying out of the combat as much as I could, I tried to give the impression of being a clone too. While I asked Hinata and Naruto to circumvent the forest to find an opening for a throw, I lent one of my Fuma shuriken I stole from Mizuki to Naruto at the beginning, so Kakashi would see it on Naruto's back even before we start the fight. He already knew how to cast Kage shuriken and trick Kakashi with the hidden Fuma shuriken who was himself. Well, the one he threw first was himself too. He used a clone for that. When I cast one of the few jutsu I knew, I kinda let Kakashi know I was the real deal. That is why he was so surprised when all of us vanished all of a sudden, but it was my plan from the beginning. An experienced Jounin such as Kakashi would see Henge if cast in front of him, but my attainments in Henge weren't any lower than a Jounin. When Perk, inorganic Henge, added to the equation, it could be said my transformations were monstrous. Oh yeah, I tested my elemental affinity in my last year. Surprisingly it was the lighting element. And as I predicted when I learned my affinity, the Perk, elemental affinity, became one-fifth. It meant I could learn other affinities too without using perks. After all, first affinity costs 10, perk points, second 20. So probably, the third will cost 30. Damn system, trying to rob me. Chapter 23, Dragon Realm Tomorrow afternoon, we will meet here and train. Now go and rest. Kakashi informed as he flickered away. He was soon in the Okage room. Kakashi, we were waiting for you for hours. Kurinai rebuked. Sorry, it took me longer than I thought. Kakashi sheepishly answered as he looked at the room. His friends were all here. He looked at the smoking Jounin with an uncertain gaze and sighed. Sadly Asuma was carrying the sins of his father. Did your team pass, Kakashi? Tsunane asked. Team 7 passes with flying colors. The teamwork was spectacular. Jin and Kaushin is both smart and capable. He was able to plan and see through the test. He is a great seedling. Naruto has great physical abilities and loyalty to the team. His chakra is monstrous. Hinata is naive and that can be dangerous on the battlefield, but I believe she is the element that will keep the team balanced. Kakashi reported. He would be too lazy to do so if it was Haruzen, but Tsunade was too dangerous to play with. That they are. Tsunade nodded. Good work. 
Why did Kakashi get the first three? My jinnins were bottom of the bottom so they failed. A nameless Jounin asked with a grievance. Because he is the best Jounin, Tsunade said with anger. If you want to have a say in here, increase your power. Yes, Hokage-sama. The nameless Jounin answered with shame. Good, it seems like new reforms we implemented work. A total of five teams passed, while I was expecting three only. Tsunade nodded. Five? Kakashi asked with surprise. Every year, only a few civilian-born jinin would pass the test. This year, a prodigy healer already passed with Karinai's team. Then it meant there were two teams formed of civilians only able to pass. Oh, you were late, you missed it. Tsunade answered, Gunma's and Iroha Hyuga's teams also passed. New generation is coming strong, Kakashi commented. They damn do, Tsunade answered with a smile. Train them well. Dismissed. Yes, Hokage-sama. Chakra, 35 to 51. Jinjutsu, Illusion 20 to 42. Summonjutsu, Conjuration 0. Ninjutsu, Destruction 25 TP 50. Taijutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block 45 to 51. Healing Jutsu, Restoration 15 to 45. Hinge, Alteration 30 to 50. Fuin Jutsu, Enchanting 25 TP 47. Smithing, 15 to 35. Bukijutsu, 1 2 handed 35 to 52. Ranged, 30 to 51. Sneak, 45 to 63. Speech, 50 to 56. Alchemy, 0. Miscellaneous, 70 to 73. Over the years, my abilities increased, but it was getting harder and harder to increase my skills. Luckily, I found a new source of perk points to spend, my perks were getting better as well. Chakra Control Chakra Control 3 about 5 Speedy Hands Chakra and Hand 1 about 5 Jinjutsu Novice Illusionist Double Cast 2 out of 5 Realistic Imagination 1 out of 5 Ninjutsu Novice Shinobi 3 about 5 Double Cast 2 out of 5 Elemental Affinity 2 out of 5 Taijutsu Iron Muscles Iron Bones Heal Novice Healer 3 out of 5 Double Cast 2 out of 5 Curing Hand Hinge Who am I 3 out of 5 Double Cast 2 out of 5 Inorganic Hinge Fuinjutsu Perfect Calligraphy 2 out of 5 Bukijutsu Armsman 2 out of 5 Ranged Aim 3 out of 5. Multiple throw. Sneak. Stealth 4 out of 5. Backstab. Light foot. At the end of the perk means there is only one level to this perk. All these cost me close to 100 perk points. I am just 41 level and most of the perk points came from my blood and sweat shed on the first floor of the dungeon. Luckily, after I discovered my elemental affinity, I sneaked into the library and learned a few low-level jutsu. Oh, and for some reason, they keep the copy of the jutsu hidden away. Only one jutsu is in the library to check them out. Then you have to go to the clerk to ask for a copy. I, luckily, found a few jutsu with copies lying around, otherwise I wouldn't learn Jack's hit. Sadly, the higher-level jutsu and copies were protected by seals. Even with the broken stealth, it would be impossible for me to enter there. I know, I tried. Lightfoot, in the game prevents the player from triggering the traps. I purchased it with hard-earned points in hope of passing those seals, but it still alerted the lady overlooking the library. Luckily, I was able to weasel my way out with speech or it would end badly. I also started tree-climbing exercises with Naruto and others. Since Tsunade, chakra control classes were even more extreme, we learned those skills easily. After all, without chakra control one couldn't learn fuin jutsu or healing jutsu. One bright side to all of these, because of my efforts, the perks points required in jinjutsu skill tree had been acquired through the dungeon. 
I didn't allot any points to other skills yet, I was already having a hard time finishing these. I was stronger than a Jinin, sure, but so were Naruto, Hinata, and Ino. My cheat was awesome, but I wasn't focusing on a single aspect only. If I were to focus on only one skill and one perk under that skill, I would be close to the max at that skill, but I wasn't. There is no rush, I will get stronger at my pace. I don't have to stand against Kaga level opponents in my early teens. There are adults who can fight in my place. Over the years, I also found two more dungeons. One in Senju Compound, the other one in Uchiha, and both are, yeah, zombie themed. After all, both clans are almost extinct. Their levels are the same as the other ones and although the monsters are weaker, they are a lot more crowded. I switch between the dungeons to see the pattern, but so far the perk point drop seems arbitrary. Once I cleared the dungeons 15 times in a row without a perk point, and once three of them dropped back to back. Also, only bosses are dropping perk points, so when I tried the second level, the two-tailed foxes didn't drop perk points at all. Imagine my disappointment. So why even bother with high-level dungeons? Higher drop rate, bro. The harder the boss, the higher the rate and value of the drops. The same goes for other drops. Three-tailed fox at the second level of the dungeon rarely drops, medium potion. Believe me, they are treasures. Anyway, I finally finished the quest I accepted when I started the academy. Jinin. You started the academy to become a full-fledged shinobi. Your path is dangerous. You should pass through the fire and swim through hell. But when you do, a new dungeon will appear for you. Finish with the highest score to be on the same team as your brother. Optional, learn an elemental jutsu besides those taught in the academy. Optional, learn two other mandatory branches, fuin jutsu and healing jutsu. Optional, steal the bells. Optional, impress your jounin sensei. Quest completed. With the notification, a new skull appeared on my map. It was pointing at the city center. I left my bed and sneaked out in excitement. As I approached the skull, a text appeared in front of me. Dragon Realm, enter. Chapter 24, Training with Kakashi. Today our training with my new team will finally start. Yay! I am excited. I really am, because to access more jutsu, I have to ask my sensei and after he approves I can enter the library to learn a couple of jutsu. See, the problem is, sensei wouldn't let their students learn too many jutsu. Because mastering one is better than learning too many. In my case, at least the beginner level mastery is no problem. I can learn them with a touch, but I too have to increase my proficiency over my skills. Sadly this is not like the game. I do learn the jutsu but they are still not at their peak. Oh, Dragon Realm, right. I did enter the realm for only a second. Shorter than a second? A zepto second? It was the trillionth of a billionth of a second, right? Anyways, as soon as I entered the new dungeon, a land filled with flying dragons appeared in front of me. It was cool and all, but they all noticed me like I noticed them. There, in their souls, was a piece I eager. It was beckoning me, and probably the same went for them, so when I entered, tens of pairs of giant dragon eyes locked on me. It was dreadful. I left the dungeon and thank God, I could leave it unlike the other dungeons. But in that Zepto second I was in there, I saw something I was looking for, for all this while, the word walls. Yes, the true blue shout carved walls. Many of them. It seems like I wasn't just born with the Skyrim system, but also as the Dragonborn. Thank you very much, I accepted the name already. So yeah, I am Dovahkiin in the truest sense. But again, dragons, scary. So, it will take a while for me to visit there again. Good morning, lovebirds. I greeted the hugging couple. Naruto would leave early to take his girlfriend from Hyuga Compound and escort her to Welp, everywhere. So, we came separately. Good morning, Ko. So, wanna wager how late Sensei is gonna be? I asked while waiting. Yesterday, he was four hours late, 
so it should be about the same. Naruto pondered. Maybe it was a test too, so he can be here any second. Hinata asked. Yeah, sure. I laughed and looked at Naruto. Two hours. Loser buys a new kunai set. Sure. Naruto beamed as we waited. And, hey. How do you know, he was late for two hours and thirteen minutes. Closer to my guess, so I win. Hello my cute Jenin. He eye smiled. You are early. Naruto shouted. Now, now. You see there was a huge traff, wait, you said I was early? He asked. Ha ha. Naruto and I bet how late you would be and he said you would be four hours late, and I said two. I won. Betting is wrong. He looked, angry. A shinobi must abstain from overindulging in the three vices, sex, alcohol, and money. Says the sensei reading smut all the time, not judging, I wish I could purchase them. I mumbled. You can't? He asked, then coughed, I mean you shouldn't. Old enough to kill and die, not old enough to read smut. Stupid rules. Anyways, today I will help you to overcome your weak points. Be a jutsu, strategy, or confidence. He said and formed two clones. Now, let's start. One of the clones picked Naruto while the other took Hinata away and he and I stayed back. What do you wish to learn? Jutsu. You use right on right? It is my main element too. He said with a smile. And Katan. I informed humbly. Double elemental affinity? He asked in shock. Yes, sir. I said and cast Katan, fireball to the sky. All right, I am proficient in both elements. Kakashi nodded. Let's test your chakra control and volume, shall we? All right. I said and walked towards the three nearby. When I did, I directed chakra to the sole of my feet and started to walk on the tree until I was upside down under a branch. All right, master at tree climbing already, very good. Kakashi nodded, impressed. Now the volume. How are we going to test that? I asked. Hmm. How many fireballs can you fire without stopping? He asked. Around eight? I said unsure. It did sound little, but it wasn't. Considering I am a jinin and my body is still small. I mean I am not an Uzumaki with a giant reserve nor any other clan with moderate extra. I am a civilian born and my chakra reserves were pitiful at birth. Thanks to my cheat, I have better chakra reserves and control but that is it. Using a Sirank Jutsu eight times back to back is a big achievement. Considering Kakashi passes out after ten minutes of intense battle and a couple of A-rank Jutsu. Pretty good for a Jinin. You can learn A-rank Jutsu. Kakashi smiled. I have a couple of right ton Jutsu I invented, I can teach you some of them. Thank you, Sensei. Can you take me to the library to select one too? I asked. What do you want to learn from the library? He frowned. I can't take you there, sadly, but I can take the scrolls you want. I wanted to learn a couple of Jinjutsu to increase my options. I said truthfully. I still needed more Jinjutsu ones in case I needed them in situations where I couldn't use the ones I knew. There were different types of Jinjutsu that could be used under different circumstances after all. Even pain, with Mighty Renegan caught in auditory Jinjutsu after all. I can do that. He smiled once again and started to explain the Jutsu he wanted to teach. First was Sirank Raitun, Lightning Beast Tracking Fong. Original Jutsu. It was one of my favorite Jutsu in the original series. Sadly, Raitun was one of the most ignored elements in the series. There weren't too many Jutsu shown. But in real life, there were more Sirank Jutsu, such as my Lightning Ball. The other Sirank Jutsu is Right Tun, Lightning Zap. You simply cover your hands with lightning to attack the enemy in close range. It will stun the enemy and increase the penetrative power of your Taijutsu. He showed the hand seals of two attacks, then showed a couple of Katan Sirank Jutsu. 
I will teach you Birank Jutsu after you master these four. He smiled and looked serious. Now you have an hour, after that we will spar to see your level in one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, Sensei. I saluted and focused on hand seals. Thanks to Chakra and Hands, Perk, I was proficient in hand seals and their effects on chakra circulations. Hand seals are just a medium to lead the chakra into designated points. Chakra originates from groins, traveling certain pathways to form the required form. When form is completed and the volume is adequate, jutsu manifests. And when mastered, chakra can be led to those points with less or no hand seals too. Like how Kakashi used Kawarimi when he was testing us. His hands were locked, but he was able to switch himself just by moving his chakra. This perk also allowed me to understand the nature of hand seals. It is kind of language. By forming the hand seals, you create a sentence. The sentence means the jutsu you want to create. It is complicated. Hell, the word complicated doesn't do justice on this shit, but it is understandable. After training for one hour, I was able to form the four jutsu sensei taught me. Raitan, lightning beast tracking fong. Raitan, lightning zap. Katan, phoenix fire technique. Katan, dragon fire technique. They were okay. I still have Raisin an A rank jutsu, and a cheat can increase the prowess of my jutsu. All right, time to spar. Kakashi appeared once again with Hinata and Naruto. Seemed like they ended their training too. Chapter 25 Attack Start! Kakashi shouted as I disappeared from where I was standing. With my stealth, it wasn't easy for even Kakashi to find me when I wasn't close. Looks like I have to use this. Kakashi raised his headband and a Sharingan appeared. He looked around to see where I was hiding. Too bad, I already took precautions. There you are. Kakashi charged at me. But it was only a Kage Bunshin. I had already asked Naruto to teach me and he readily accepted, so I could use it without anyone suspecting me. Even when I learned the technique directly from the scroll, nobody would suspect me. Fortunately, Kakashi was unaware that I had also learned Kage Bunshin. I know that advanced Sharingan can see through the real body among the clones. However, Kakashi didn't have the necessary chakra reserves to train his Sharingan to its full potential, at least not during the first part of the story. Additionally, since I wasn't present, Kakashi wasn't able to see through my clone. Hell, even the Rinnegan failed to detect the lightning clone during Pain's battle with Kakashi. When Kakashi charged at my clone with Chunin level speed, the clone was still able to form hand seals at a moderate speed. Fortunately, my speedy hands perk was fully charged, allowing me to form hand seals at the speed of sound, though I preferred to keep this ability hidden for the time being. When Kakashi was a short distance from the clone, it completed the jutsu and sprayed the ball of fire. Katan, fireball. Ninjutsu increased to 52. Not now. Suetan, water wall. Kakashi created a wall of water, causing the area to become covered in vapor. Everything according to Kikaku, plan. Kakashi followed his instincts and moved towards the clone, while I appeared nearby and quickly formed hand seals. Raitan, lightning beast tracking Fong. It said beast, right? Not a hound. So, I made some tweaks to the jutsu while practicing. I conjured a worm-like floating creature connected to my hand with a thin line of lightning chakra and used it to charge the evaporated water with lightning. Water is conductive, as is vapor. When my jutsu interacted with the vapor, it charged fully with lightning. As Kakashi approached my clone, it dissipated due to the currents in the vapor. Kakashi was zapped by the charged vapor, but only slightly. He turned to look at me, and thanks to Sharingan, he could see me as clear as day. He flickered and appeared next to as I let the lightning beast go, and drew a kunai to deflect the attack aiming at my shoulder. He was strong. The Cyclops beast was fucking too strong. The kunai slipped out of my grip, slicing my hand between my thumb and index finger. Wincing in pain, I quickly jumped back and used my mystical palm technique to heal the wound using the double cast 
perk. In just a few seconds, the cut had disappeared completely. Expertly applied mystical palm. Kakashi praised. Thanks. I nodded while staring back. After staring at each other for a few seconds, we both charged forward simultaneously. He attacked with tens of shuriken while I used single seal kawarimi. When the shuriken landed on a log, he looked around to find me. I used shadow clone jutsu once again, creating two clones. One of the clones dashed away as fast as possible while I stood back with the other clone and we charged two jutsu. Katan, fireball. Raitan, lightning ball. When two balls collided with Kakashi simultaneously, an explosion erupted. Although Kakashi had already moved away from the center of the blast, he watched in awe. While it wasn't an unprecedented feat, it was still impressive for a Jinin to accomplish. Kakashi quickly dashed away from me and the clone then had fired the jutsu, intercepting the running clone. He used his own ninjutsu to attack this time, catching my clone off guard. I watched in awe as Kakashi emerged from the ground with Dotan, rending Drill Fong, punching the clone on the chin. As the smoke from the clone's dissipation cleared, I knew it was the perfect opportunity to act. The clone already fired tens of shuriken with ninja wire attached and used Kage Shuriken Jutsu. Boy did this attack also copy the ninja wire, yes it did. The shurikens pulled Kakashi towards a nearby tree and I quickly took over the ninja wire from my clone. With the wire in my control, I unleashed the katan, dragon fire technique, guiding the flames through the wire and towards the trapped Kakashi. But sadly, in the next second, Kakashi disappeared into a burst of lightning. A hand touched my shoulder and I heard a voice say, All right, that's enough. Well done. Thank you, Sensei. I ran out of chakra anyway. Who is next? He asked and as expected Naruto jumped out. Their battle was less entertaining. Naruto's arsenal of jutsu was a lot more limited. He was only exploiting Kage Bunshin, then firing hundreds of shuriken with hundred clones. Then using Kage Shuriken Jutsu with hundred clones to create thousands of shuriken. Strong, yes, but almost no one dies from shuriken in Naruto world. Still, by combining Futon, Great Breakthrough with thousand shuriken even gave hard time to Kakashi. In the end, he mulled his way into the earth and caught Naruto by pulling him down. Hinata's battle was even worse. She hated fighting, despite being good at it. Kakashi did his best while training, but she was still too uncertain when using attacks. She was afraid to hurt a Jounin. In the end, she lost. All right, it is already better than I expected. Starting from tomorrow, we will start taking missions. Every second day we will train again. Yes, finally missions. Naruto shouted in excitement. Don't want to burst your bubble, Naruto, but most of the missions we will take in the first few months will not be what you were expecting, I said with a sigh. What do you mean? Naruto asked. D-rank missions are mostly walking the dogs, painting the fences, clearing the weeds, catching house pets, and similar easy tasks, Hinata explained. What? Why? Naruto asked with actual tears in his eyes. Because they will allow us to bond better and increase our team play. Now, dismissed. Yes, sir. Hinata and I answered while Naruto was crying on his knees. Chapter 26 Oh boy! Team 7 reports to take a D-rank mission. Kakashi said when we entered the room. Tsunade was seated behind the desk and from the look of it against her will. Shizun was nearby, forcing her to work while her eyes were begging for an escape. Ah, Team 7. How was the training? She asked. It was spectacular, Hokage-sama. These three are monsters. Kakashi said with an eye smile. And how is the rookie of the year? Stop! I interjected before Kakashi could say anything. Everyone turned to look at me curiously. Don't you know a man shouldn't be praised to his face? Isn't it arrogant for you to assume he will praise you? Tsunade asked. Not arrogance, but pride, Hokage-sama. I said humbly. Little shit is good with words too. 
the Sinja princess asked after a sigh, all right, all right. So, what kind of quest do you want, Kakashi? Something simple to get used to the mission process, writing a report, team formation, and payment. Kakashi answered after thinking for a while. He was a much better teacher than he was in the anime. It was probably because of Tsunade and his new identity as a village council member. How about painting the fences for old Hannah? Tsunade pulled out a scroll and looked over. Savior. Paint the fences for old Hannah. Take a look around at the house to see if anything amiss. Dash, optional, report your findings to your sensei. Dash, optional, solve the trouble on your own. Sigh. First mission and there is something troublesome. Team 7 will take the mission. Kakashi took the scroll and we left in tow. Old Hannah's house was at the edge of the village, close to the forest. It was on the other side of the clan area, so it was pretty desolate. When we arrived, an old woman was waiting with cookies at the gate. Of course there were cookies, this place was obviously on the dark side. Welcome, welcome, little ninjas. Here, I made some cookies, and there is milk. The woman greeted us. Thank you. I nodded and took a hot cookie. The taste was amazing. Holy ramen! Naruto exclaimed. This is good. It certainly is. Kakashi nodded. I failed to see him eating. Let's get to work. Can you show us the equipment please, Hanasan? Well of course. Follow me. She took us to the back of the house. There were fences and trapping the garden around the house. It wasn't big nor small, all in all it would take two days for a civilian to finish it. With three ninjas it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Please color them with white, yellow, and cyan in order. One white, one yellow, and one cyan. Old woman requested as she showed us the dyes. We will start working, Hanasan. Kakashi nodded and sat on a bench in the garden. Now, my cute little Jinnin, start working. Yes, sir. I walked to the bucket full of dye and kicked it lightly. It wasn't as viscous as I expected. Nor fluid. It was a little thickened. What are you doing, Ko? Naruto asked as he took off his coat. Which was gray in color, not orange. Never orange. I am thinking if I can use Sweetun to use this dye. I answered while thinking of suitable hand signs. Is it possible? Hinata asked. It should be. Jutsu are way of controlling elements. Since dye is liquid, it should be controllable with chakra. I nodded. Each of us should take a color and paint the fences by skipping two. Naruto, don't screw it up. Why are you warning me? Naruto said with a pout. Anyway, Hinata white, Naruto yellow and leaves Cyan to me. All right. Off they go. If I recall correctly, there was a technique utilizing water bodies to create tentacle-like attacks. What was its name, Waterfong Bullet? If I can reduce the swirling motion and the impact, and increase the finesse. It worked! Hinata shouted in shock. I finally managed to do it after ten minutes. In the meantime, Hinata and Naruto painted half of the fences. Sweetun, easy painting. New Jutsu learned. The cyan-colored dye moved out of the bucket like a tentacle and with my will moved towards the fences. Near the fences, I split it into twenty thinner tentacles and they landed on the area I wanted them to. Hee <laughs> hee! I smiled as I caught up with their progress with one jutsu. When I turned back, I saw Kakashi was looking at me with Sharingan. Asshole! Ko! Teach us too! Naruto came near me. All right, these are the seals. I said and showed. Tiger snake monkey snake dog. Naruto, create ten clones to practice, it will be faster. I said and started to work on my fences. Hinata had Sweetun affinity to begin with, she didn't take long to learn the jutsu. After half an hour, my fences were painted. Since my mastery over ninjutsu was better, I could do it easier and faster. 
now that I had some time, I went to look around. The garden was gigantic. So, I had to carpet search the garden first, before moving to the house. At some corner, I found not so old footsteps. They looked a couple of days old and from the deepness I could say the owner was heavy. Much heavier than the old lady. Also the foot was too big, probably male. I followed the trail until I reached the window at the side of the house. Window was locked and didn't look like it was forced. The quest cursor is showing the house but not the entrance. Then I thought about something and looked at the second floor. Just above, there was another window, and it was slightly ajar. I looked around and saw nobody, so I started to walk on the wall until I reached the second floor. Of course I cleaned the soles of my shoes so I wouldn't leave footstep on the wall. I pulled the window up and it opened without any effort. I jumped in the room and looked around. It looked like a simple room at first sight. Then I looked carefully and noticed something. There was a seal under the bed. I crouched and looked again to notice a trap door under the seemingly old bed, closed with a seal. My seal mastery is 47, not good enough. I shook my head and further looked into the seal to see if I could crack it. I should buy a perk. Shit, I was saving them. This better be good. Disenchant one-fourth. Learn the way of working of the seals by breaking them apart. Just the first perk cost 15 perk points. And it would only work on B-rank and lower seals. On top of that, I could only use it once a day. I crawled over the seal and used the perk. Seal disenchanted. Triggering seal learned. Locking seal learned. Voice repressing seal learned. Chakra locking seal learned. Fuck yes. Yes. For seals in one, allow me to learn four of them at once. Yes. I opened the trap door and entered with a grin. It is so worth it. Beneath the trap door was a ladder going at least two floors down. The room was probably a basement, and the only entrance was the trap door. Basement was a dark room. I closed my eyes and waited for my eyes to get used to darkness. When it did, I took a look around. The room was fairly big, and there was some old furniture here and there. But at the end of it, there were some crates. I walked to them slowly and noticed part of the seal I disenchanted was placed on them too. Locking seals. Now that I learned this seal, I could reverse it without any problem. I touched one of the crates and my chakra flared for a second. When it did, the seal vanished. I opened the crate and looked inside. Fuck! Chapter 27, Troublesome Why does this shit always happen to me? I sighed as I looked at the crate. Now that I think about it, the mission was simple. All we had to do was paint the fences and leave. And if it wasn't the quest's warning, I would do just that. The old lady probably calls over gin and teams for odd jobs to sell away her feeble, helpless cute grandma identity. After all, if she were to isolate herself from the village, people would be suspicious. Especially paranoid shinobi. What should I do with you? I looked at the unconscious boy lying in the crate. I remember this boy. He was a year older than me and went MIA during a C-rank mission last week. How did he end up in the basement of an old woman? I have few theories. Now, let's say a Jin and teen went missing during the mission. The ANBU or Jounin would rush to look at the place where it happened. And, move forward towards the closest villages, natural shelters marked in many years. No one would think of going back to the village to search a sweet old woman's basement. Jounin sensei murdered, three Jinin are missing, the first everyone thinks would be enemy villages abducting younglings. Then they would keep them here for a time until it cools down, when it does, they would smuggle them out. Great plan. I doubt anyone would suspect it, ever. I wouldn't if it wasn't for the quest. Now, I finished the quest. I looked around to see if anything was amiss. It was. As a typical quest, I earned my reward through the quest itself, for new seals. I can further burgle the house to increase my reward. But I have two optional subquests. Letting Kakashi know, or solving it myself. 
What to do, what to do. Skyrim is not like generic games where rewards are often determined before the completion of quests. In Skyrim, rewards are tied to actions. For instance, if the objective is to clear a cave, players will find their reward within the cave itself. However, if players choose not to take any of the items found within, there may be no reward at all or only a minimal monetary reward given by the quest giver. This was a perfect example of Skyrim Quest. If I turn my back now, my reward will be seals and anything I take from the basement. But if I choose one of the optional subquests, my reward will increase. Depending on which one I choose. In normal cases, when quests are finished by the player alone, the reward would increase. But not in this case, well not necessarily. Let's say, if I try to free them myself, I would probably have to confront the old lady, who is probably a strong kunoichi, or her accomplices. And the reward would be whatever I loot from them. Or I could let Kakashi and the village know, and get rewarded for my actions. Which would bring questions as well. After all, I had no reason to suspect the old lady, when even Kakashi didn't. What to do, what to do? I should create some evidence. I closed the crate and looked around the basement. There were explosive tags, kunai, and shuriken-filled crates. I got a crate of each item and stored them in the inventory. After that, I left the basement and went down to the garden. While I was walking down, I did it backwards and left prints on purpose while using partial hinge on my leg. Now, this isn't as hard as it sounds. Actually, it is pretty easy. How? Imagine Naruto's first hinge in anime. Looks like Hokage but at the same time, it does not. Hinge is a manifestation of imagination, so changing partially isn't hard. It is a mistake of imagination, so an imaginative mind and a person who can do hinge masterfully can do much better. The bigger footsteps on the wall look like climbing to the second floor. But they are not obvious. They are so faint, it is almost impossible to see. As the next step, I pulled out a crate and held it in my hand. While I was holding, I walked from fences to walls to carve my footsteps onto the wet dirt, still with hinge feet. It will sell the impression of whoever's footsteps these were, he or she was carrying something. As they are deeper. And why didn't that person use chakra to not leave footsteps? Like I care, maybe they were careless. The last piece of evidence was, hairs of three jinnin I found in the basement. Not too much. Only a few. I placed them intermittently, buried into the dirt. After all was done, I walked back where my team was. Naruto was almost done, and Hinata was helping him. Kakashi was where I left him, reading his book. Where were you? He asked. Taking a leak, I answered while making a few hand signs to let him know there was trouble. You shouldn't have done that outdoors. You could have asked the mistress to let you use the bathroom. It is uncouth. Kakashi answered with a sigh, but as I was serious. Oh, I didn't want to bother the sweet old lady with my presence, in case I disturb her business. Jin and teams of three can be annoying and comatose idiots sometimes. I answered lazily. But I am your Jounin sensei, and I am here, right? Kakashi asked without taking his eyes from the book. While you are lying dead? It is as good as if you are not here. I laughed. What if some animal attack you while you were doing your business? What would you do then? He asked, reprimanding. You are right. Animals around here can be quite strong. And from the look of it, there can be more than one. I shivered. It might be dangerous. What if I drew them to my team? Sorry, Sensei, I was sloppy. It is fine, Kaushin. I trust you will not do it again. After all, I put you in charge of this team to protect your teammates. Kakashi I smiled as he got up. Thank you for your trust, Sensei. I will let no one hurt them. I will follow them like a shadow, and send my shadow to fetch help from hell if necessary. I nodded while walking towards the still working duo. Kakashi on the other hand moved towards the side of the house where the window was. Chapter 28 Bunny 
Kakashi moved to the area where Kaushin planted his evidence lazily and took a look around. He inspected the ground and noticed the deep footsteps first. Then he looked at the wall and gazed at the second floor window. Then he caught the sight of hairs on the ground and went to the front door, fully cautious. Kaushin was near Naruto and Hinata, waiting for Kakashi to finish his inspection. The enemy wasn't aware of them yet, and if Kakashi thought he couldn't handle it, they could still go back to the village to fetch some help first. But if he could finish, he would battle on his own, and Kaushin had to protect Hinata and Naruto. Kakashi knocked on the door and waited. The old lady opened the door and smiled sweetly. Hello, Jown and San. Done already? She asked. Yes, ma'am. Kakashi nodded and handed over the mission scroll for the old lady to sign. It was a normal procedure. The old lady stuck to her role and went inside to fetch her reading glasses, while Kakashi asked. Can I use the bathroom? Sure, upstairs second on the right. She shouted. Kakashi climbed up the stairs and pulled his headband up to reveal his crimson eye. He looked around to see if there were any seals and failed to see even one. He moved to the room where the window was opening and took a look around. It didn't take long for him to find the trap door and go down. After taking a look at the crates for less than a minute, he climbed back up to see the old woman standing at the door. Sigh, ten years of operation. How did you discover it? Asked the woman. Does it matter? Kakashi asked with full caution. At the same time he heard an explosion from downstairs. He wanted to rush out from the window, but the old Kunoichi closed it with a doton jutsu. Let's dance for a while. The old woman smiled eerily. She couldn't win against the famous Kakashi, she knew it too. But she wasn't willing to go down without a battle. Her two partners were also dealing with the Jin and team. If they could flank Kakashi while keeping three buggers hostage, they could still salvage the situation. You are not strong. And from the look of it, neither are your friends. How did you manage to kill Jown and Sensei? Kakashi asked as he pulled out a kunai. He is stalling. It works for me. The old woman thought as she answered unhurriedly. Ambush of course. Old lady trick wouldn't work outside of these walls. Shinobi are paranoid creatures. Kakashi stated. Regular traps wouldn't work against a Hyuga. From the looks of it, you are a pretty good seal master. He then praised. Seal mistress. The old woman answered tersely. Whatever. Kakashi shrugged it off. I wonder where your mastery comes from. Live as long as I do and you learn a few tricks. She didn't answer. True. But age isn't everything you know. A twelve-year-old Jinin can outsmart you. Kakashi smiled. Humph. Unfledged ninja boys can do nothing. She scoffed. But the next second she heard the screams of her two companions. Asuma was having a hard life ever since his father was marked as a traitor like his childhood friend Danzo. Although Kanoha Shinobi knew better than blaming children for their father's sins, civilians were as ignorant and annoying as always. Once the prideful clan name he was carrying with fell, now was a source of scorn. His father wasn't helping either. After being beaten by Senju princes from village door to end, he acted like a senile old man, telling people how sorry he felt and how he disappointed his teachers. But Asuma knew better than running away. He had to salvage the situation by showing the rest of the Saratobi clan was still burning with love fire and would do everything in their power to protect the village. Luckily, the clan heads were sensible and didn't take away the Jin and team he had his eyes on. He was sure some other clan heads would do their best to shame him and wouldn't let him near their heirs. But Shikaku was his old friend and loyal advisor of his father, Akimichi was also at Saratobi's side. Inoichi was on the fence, but wouldn't break their relationship with the other two on something so small. Now, by teaching their heirs with all the gusto he could muster, he was even more determined than before. He would wash away this shame and would walk his chest swell with pride once again. As he and his team were walking down the street towards the Hokage building to report their newly completed mission, a bunny hopped in front of them. How cute! 
Ino jumped over and grabbed the bunny as she hugged it to her chest. Asuma was suspicious, but he couldn't tell if anything was wrong with the animal. Just a hunch. We should roast and eat it. I crave some bunny thighs. Choji said while drooling. You, stay away from this cute thing, Ino said while further pushing the bunny on her chest. Yeah, you stay away from me, fat ass. All of a sudden the team went crazy. Asuma pulled out his trench knives and dashed at Ino. Panic Blondie threw the bunny in the air, while Shikamaru formed hand seals, and Choji was going mad. Calm down! The clone shouted as he cancelled the hinge. The team of four looked at him with different expressions. Ino was blushing mad, Choji was disappointed, while Asuma and Shikamaru were awed. I didn't see through it at all, Asuma commented, much to Lazy Nara's relief. My team is in trouble. I am just a shadow clone. The clone said and explained the situation. Choji go and explain the situation to Hokage-sama. Shikamaru, Ino, and I will rush to their help. Go now! Yes, sir. Team 10 disappeared. The clone dispelled itself after shrugging too. Chapter 29, Dealt With When the clone dispelled, I learned he actually met with Team 10. So my pumpkin was coming. I smiled while looking at two enemies that appeared out of nowhere. Look at them, they are just brats. One on the right said. He looked to be in his thirties with no distinct features. Brat or not, they have to go. For the sake of the mission. One on the left was a classy old man in his fifties. He was even wearing a suit and carrying a cane. And how are you going to do that? I asked with a smirk while standing in front of Naruto and Hinata. I already alerted them when Kakashi left. They were still looking busy but both were fully cautious. Look at him. Despite being so small, he does realize the situation he is in. He is stalling so his Jounin sensei can come and assist him. The old man said while raising the cane, aiming it at us. Age isn't everything old man. You should know that, right? I asked, while pulling out a kunai. There was an explosive tag wrapped around it. I threw the kunai, and to no one's surprise the old man caught it without much effort. He grabbed the lit seal and extinguished it. Kids shouldn't play with explosives. He said. Old enough to die, old enough to blow up some stuff. I smirked. In the next second, both Kanai and the explosive seal turned into two clones covered with explosive tags. Shit! Both enemies shouted at the same time. In the next second, the area where they were standing exploded while I pulled Hanana and Naruto back while watching the place. The map was still showing three red dots, it meant they were still alive. The third one was further from the duo, it was the old lady. This kid is dangerous. Middle-aged man's voice arrived in our ears from the smoke. That he is. Old man also nodded. In the next second, I saw something struck me dumb. The duo was covered with a thin film of blue chakra. Barrier bloodline? I asked in surprise. Oh, you know your stuff. The old man nodded. Let's deal with them. Middle-aged man said as he dashed. Naruto created lots of clones to intercept him, while Hinata formed the new jutsu I taught them to spray paint on their faces to hopefully blind them. I held the kunai in front of me while waiting for the old man to arrive. It didn't take long. The man was fast. The cane in his hand was tougher than kunai and each impact was shaking my innards. His taijutsu was also better than mine, luckily his speed was still manageable. I used my small body to dance around the old man. He was lacking the elasticity of the young and couldn't keep up with my sudden moves, despite being faster. When I dodged another swipe of the cane by dodging under it, I charged the kunai with lightning chakra and sent it towards the old man's side. From such a close distance, the old man could barely dodge the kunai empowered with lightning chakra. The kunai grazed his torso while flying behind him. Old man looked mad, but the next second he heard the scream of his companion. He instinctively turned to look and saw the kunai he just dodged was stabbed on the shoulder of his friend. 
but before he could wrap his head around it, he felt danger approaching from his flank. He tapped into his chakra and a blue sphere covered his body. In the next second, tens of explosive tags covered his barrier and exploded. He ignored the tags and moved towards his friend to save him from now attacking madly Naruto and Hinata attacking from a distance. But just as he was about to take a step, he froze where he was standing. He couldn't move. He felt like he could break from it, but didn't know what was stopping him. In his stupor, Naruto ended his friend, while the latter screamed like a butchered pig. When he got out of control, he realized a withdrawing shadow and turned back in terror. There he saw two more jinin and a full-fledged jounin. You guys okay? Asuma asked while pulling out his trench knives. Just peachy. I answered as I was still locked on the enemy. Good, where is Kakashi? Asuma asked. Dealing with the boss, inside the house. I answered and sent the kunai towards the old man. He dodged it while looking for an escape route, but now he was surrounded from all sides. Can he handle the boss? Asuma asked as we closed down on the enemy. He can. I nodded and reported, enemy is troublesome. He has a barrier bloodline. None of my jutsu can penetrate it. This might help. A voice drifted over as blue lightning cried in the air like thousands of birds. In the next second, Kakashi appeared with his hand inside the old man's chest, bleeding. Good job, Kakashi. Asuma smiled. Thanks for your help, Asuma. Kakashi smiled too. Done nothing. Asuma waved it off as he looked at another Kakashi carrying an unconscious old lady. You created a clone to send to the toilet, right? I asked with a sigh. Yeah. Kakashi nodded. Probably felt your chakra, and got suspicious. If you just went to the basement, they wouldn't be any wiser. I said. Probably. Kakashi answered. Anyway, good job team. Your performance was spectacular. What now? Anyone gonna fill us in? Eno asked while still blushing a little. Let me. I answered and explained the story from my side. How I was walking around and found a hair. Then I noticed the footsteps and felt something was wrong. How I discovered the basement and the gin in crates and how I reported to Kakashi. Wow, those are all big coincidences. Hair could be anything. Could be some children playing there or previous teams came to help in the house. Shikamaru said. Could be, but I felt something was wrong. Intuitions are Shinobi's biggest weapons. I answered dismissively. Kaushin is right. Always trust your gut feeling. Asuma nodded. Mm, good job, Kaushin. I will make sure to report your role. You will be rewarded heavily. Kakashi, too, praised. Not long after, ANBU team arrived and took the trio. Another team went to check the house and rescued the Jinin. Chapter 30, Evil Laughter You have unearthed a big plot, Kaushin, for this, you will be heavily rewarded. Tsunade looked at me after we reported what we had done, and praised me. Thank you, Hokage-sama. I nodded calmly, but in my head, I was thinking about what to ask as a reward. Maybe I should ask for Fort's kunai. With disenchantment, I can reverse engineer it. But I doubt its rank is lower than S rank. Maybe even higher. I can ask a couple of A rank jutsu. I have enough chakra reserve, and it is expanding every day. Soon my chakra skill will advance enough for me to get the perk, Tailless Tailed Beast, and my reserve will triple at least. Then I can spam A rank jutsu like they are nothing. Jin and Kaushin, Hyuga Clan will also reward you for your hard work. You saved a Jinin and a pair of Byakugan with it. We are eternally thankful. Hinata's father Hayashi said from the side. Now, this wasn't our first meeting, maybe the fifth? When I first nudged Naruto to make a move on Hinata, well let's just say it didn't end well. A couple of Hyuga came and threatened one little blonde and even the eternally cursed Jin and Niji came to beat him. Of course, I went medieval on his ass and parceled him up back to his clan. Well, that didn't end well either. 
Hinata was banned from interacting with me or Naruto and forced to drop out of healing classes. Well, that didn't end well for them either. I wanted to speak with Tsunade and wanted her to put some sense into the old goat, but it wouldn't do either. Later, Naruto and I designed something we would always be proud of. It cost me a lot of time and effort. Even with inventory, stealing, and all the money I piled from odd jobs and dungeons. It went like this, a giant cloth painted vividly by yours truly. One Hayashi and Izashi, Hayashi kneeling in front of his younger brother. Asking forgiveness for all the wrong he had done. There were four pictures in total but with the bubble texts, the message was clear to anyone with brain. First scene, Hayashi is on his knees, looking up at his brother. His eyes are filled with remorse and disbelief. Hisashi on the other hand looked angry and disappointed. The bubble coming out of his head read, Brother, why are you oppressing the will of the clan members? Wasn't it my will that ended with my death and survival of yours? The bubble on Hayashi read, It was, Brother. It should have been me. I should have died in your stead. Second scene, Hisashi, I wanted to take control of my fate and I did. I wanted to choose my own end. In my terms. Not for the clan head's order. I wanted to do as I wished, and live or die freely. Didn't we always want to break the clan from this curse? We did. We should have been. I was blinded by the previous clan head, and mark you and your son with the cage. I did you both wrong. Third scene, Hisashi, and look where this led us. Me dead, you pathetic, unreconstructed figurehead, oppressing your own daughter to bow to your will. Your wife would be ashamed of you. She. She would understand. Fourth scene, Hisashi, I don't. And devastated Hayashi. Man, imagine how people's faces were when at the dawn of a new day, an explosion alerted everyone in the town. When people rushed to the source, they all saw the cloth painted vividly. What did it achieve? A lot. Firstly, let's stick up in his ass Hayashi. He instantly changed his ways and let some slack to the poor girl. Hinata returned to the healing classes, and not long after, after a few more visits from me of course, she was allowed to be with Naruto. Less idiot, haughty and be consumed with fate Niji. After asking around and learning ins and outs of the situation and reading his father's letter, he was more human-like. Hinata has been happier ever since. Thus one of my proudest moments. And should be the same for Naruto. Of course, we didn't take the credit for it. Thank you for your consideration, Hayashi-sama. I just did what I had to. I answered politely. He nodded and said he would still reward me so I had to visit him sometime. After the council and busybodies left, it was my team only with Hokage in the room. So, Tsunade started, I read the report from several sources and still can't understand why you entered Kaushin. Care to explain? Sure. I was looking around in boredom since I finished my task first. I said while looking around. My team nodded so I continued, when I was walking, I noticed the footstep on the wall and wanted to give free service to the old lady since she was so nice to us. Gave cookies and everything. Then I wondered. How could there be footsteps on the wall? She was just a frail old lady, and the footstep was big for her feet. I at first thought some shinobi was robbing her, so I took a look around. There was a window on the first floor, but shinobi decided to enter the second floor by climbing the walls. It didn't make any sense. Then I discovered the footstep on the ground. Since they could walk on the walls, they should be able to prevent footsteps from forming with the same technique. I at first thought maybe they were careless until I noticed a couple of hairs in the grass. Adding all of them together, and my gut feeling telling me something was wrong, I slowly climbed up and found the trap door. The basement was filled with weapons illegal to possess. And three crates with three jinin I knew from the academy. I went back immediately and alerted Sensei. I explained my way of thinking. It sounded reasonable, right? Anyway, good job. You prevent a major crisis. What do you want as a reward? She asked after thinking for a while. 
and taking the difficulty of the mission and significance of it to the village, the mission will be considered as A rank, though it will be sealed. Still, the pay of 600k Rio will be distributed among all of you. 150k each? Naruto asked in bewilderment. Not quite. Kakashi sighed. Aw oh man, I suck at math. Wasn't 600 divided by 4 equal to 150? Naruto asked as he was raising two fingers on his right hand and four on the other. Your math is astonishing. Kakashi rolled his eyes. But the rewards are given based on contribution. Usually Jounin Sensei takes the big cut of the pie but in this mission, the most goes to Kaushin. He single-handedly found the problem, surveyed the situation and alerted the team before the enemy was aware of him. He then battled against a Chunin-level enemy and injured the other so you could take them. If it wasn't for him, the Hyuga clan bloodline would be stolen and we would still be unaware of human trafficking going on under our noses. Wow, when you put it like that, I can't help but be astonished. Naruto nodded. Yeah, anyway. The usual is MVP taking the 50% and the rest of the team sharing the other 50%. Is it acceptable with you, Kaushin? Kakashi asked. I am fine with 25%, Sensei. You still did most of the battling, and Naruto and Hinata were a big help. I am more interested in rewards. I calmly answered, as I looked at Tsunade. What is my limit? I asked. Below S rank. 3 Jutsu. Tsunade smirked. All right, I would like to learn Clone Great Explosion, bringer of darkness technique, and multiplying explosive tags. I pondered for a bit and chose three I had in mind. You are. Well informed, Tsunade asked with a frown. I like to read, I answered with a shrug. Can I also sign the summoning contract of Rashomon? I asked with hope. You can, after further services. I am pleased with you Kaushin, and not just as a Hokage. Thank you. Hokage-sama. All right then, I will send the scrolls to you. You don't have to return them, but you have to destroy them after you are done. Is that understood? She asked. Yes, ma'am. She nodded after my confirmation. Can I? I started, she frowned. Can I teach these jutsu to others? I asked. For example? She asked. Imagine thousands of clones on the battlefield exploding, I smirked. She thought for a while then a sinister smile curled up on her face. That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you on part two. Peace.